Hello there, welcome to stream number 117. So yesterday I started a little experiment where I was prototyping a game using Entity Component System just to sort of test my knowledge after reading about ECS from various blogs and Wikipedia entry and other things. I think it went pretty well and I uh, had a lot of fun and I had to end early. Well. I ended an hour and a half late, but it felt early for me because I was having so much fun. So I was looking forward to today to continue this prototype. It's a silly little uh, knockoff of uh, the game Gauntlet from the 1980s uh, because I wanted to pick a game that has pretty simple logic and yet might be a fun to do, to do. So instead of Gauntlet, it's Glove, Iron Glove is the name of the game. And... Let's see. Oh yeah, I was going to um, make a standalone solution for it so that people can more easily get a hold of it from GitHub and also so that I can kind of avoid for a while the uh, IntelliSense problems I'm having, which I think are because the project's getting kind of big. So maybe that's the first thing I'm gonna do. But um, today I'm just continuing the work from yesterday. So we have a few components and systems in the game. So we can move our hero around and the monsters follow us. But we don't have any concept of collision or damage or treasure or monster generators or the exit of the level or walls or any of that stuff. So a lot of that I'm going to try to add today and try to put it into order of what makes sense as far as progressively adding features to the game. So first I thought I would make the player movement system not allow moving into other colliders. So other colliders would be monsters, for example. And then the same thing for the AI. Because right now what happens when the, the player or the monsters can move on top of each other, and although it's kind of nice to see them hug, really they shouldn't be doing that. So they should uh, be respecting each other's space. So we're going to do that. And then I thought I'd add walls and floors so that we can see a background, and then we can have non-living colliders in the system and add health display for that health score and other things and then the and then in the ai system i wanted to actually have the monsters deal damage to the player so in gauntlet for example the ghost monster when it reaches the player the monster is destroyed and the player's health goes down so i think that's what i'll do so right now the monsters are just ghosts but later we could add different kinds of monsters that aren't destroyed when they run into you. Instead, maybe they just club you. So, so after allowing monsters to hurt us, we'll add pickups like treasure, food, and potions. So treasure just gives you a higher score. Food restores some of your health. And a potion lets, is something you can uh, put into your equipment or inventory so that you can use it with a special key that will uh, destroy all the enemies close to you. And uh, so after that, uh, we'll, we'll add weapons. So both player side and monsters. So probably the ghost monster won't have a weapon, but the, uh, hey there, Z -Z I have some, I have some trouble saying your name, I'm sorry. Um, so weapons for the, for the hero mostly, because I want to be able to uh, shoot the monsters from a distance. So we'll add a player firing and, and missile systems. Player firing is just going to create missiles in, in the game whenever you um, are hitting the fire key. Missile system will be moving the missiles and making them deal damage to enemies, that kind of thing. So then I will have to add generators. So this is generating monsters and then the generation system, so that's operating the generators. And then last but not least, a way out, <laughs> the exit component and system. Although I'm not sure if we need a system for this because it's a single, the exit's gonna be a single tile. We could just get away with having the uh, game know which tile it happens to have the exit and then um, we're just ending the game when we reach that square. So anyway, that's the, that's the goal for today. But uh, is there a screenshot drawing of the game? Uh, no, it was just in my head as in uh, what our goal is, is to mimic Gauntlet. Like a type, 1985. So, there you go. Can I make that bigger? I can make it reasonably bigger. So this is the game I'm, tr I'm sort of uh, using as inspiration for my prototype, right? So you're controlling a hero, you have these ghosts that kind of 
spawn from these generators that come in after you. Uh, here's some treasure. And you basically just try to find the exit, pick up the treasure, and not run into the ghosts. Shoot them before they get to you, that kind of thing. And we'll have our our score is uh, increased by treasure. And then health, um, of course, that you know what that is. There's also other things in the real game like keys and uh, multiplayer and the thief NPC. But uh, I don't know. If I have a lot of fun, I could add that into my copy. Or I can just, uh, once I get a functional game, cause just kind of call it and uh, do a post-mortem, I guess. But yeah, that's that's the concept. Now, what does it look like in practice? Actually, I should have had this set up to go before. Let's set it up now. I have to uh, wait a few moments for that to start. And actually, well, I guess while that's running, I'll start the server end. Uh, that's this one. So it, the server is really small. It starts up and running. It's a single server. It's just going to wait for the client. Hey there, Harley Monkey. Oh, and by the way, this this game is not what I'm doing mainly on Twitch. This is just a prototype for me to figure out, um, to test my knowledge on ECS. So prototypes are all for testing something out for uh, trying to learn something and then you kind of put it aside and uh you don't you don't maintain it it's really just um for um figuring things out for for when you're doing your real work so my real work is a different kind of game but s slightly similar on certain aspects like i do have my real game will be multiplayer so it'll have a server back end and a front end and i'm trying to keep the languages pretty similar so um the front end for both. Oh, I'm being raided by Honest Dan. Hey there, Honest Dan. Uh, how did your stream go? And I have a lot of people coming in just as I'm starting, so you get to see my uh, prototype so far, which is uh, kind of ugly. But, but the goal for today is to try to make this into into a game that looks like the original Gauntlet game. That's what I'm trying to make today, as sort of a prototype of uh, trying to Trying to see if I can make an entity comp component system and uh, that I didn't misunderstand something when I was reading. So I'll show you what I have so far. It's kind of silly. So we can connect to the game and we can control our character and run away from these ghosts. But they, can, they, can, they don't collide into each other yet and when they reach, reach us they just give us a warm and friendly hug. Um, there's no health system, I mean there's no health components, there's no uh, collision system. There's just moving around. And um, that's it. So we're, we're going to change. The objective is to try, try to turn that into that. With not so good at graphics because I'm not an artist. So yeah. We're going to do this. We're going to add code to not allow things to run into each other. So basic collision. Adding walls, floors, adding health component, adding a display for health, adding, um, doing damage to the player, and then later we'll have, um, be able to f have a player firing a missile system so that we can damage the enemies, add generators, and then it should be getting reasonably close to uh, Gauntlet, except for with horrible graphics instead of the real thing. All right. Okay, so... What did I miss? Will the main game be in C++? Yeah, so I'm, this prototype kind of has some elements of uh, the real game um, in terms of like what languages I'm going to use. So there's the back end. It's in um, C++ because my real game, I want to be in C++ on the back end as well. And then the, the front end being in React also saying the real, my real game will also be in React on the front end. And uh, WASM, that's WebAssembly? No, I wasn't thinking about doing that. I don't want to pull in too many things I don't know. <laughs> Any other questions I missed? I'm mostly just prototyping something new. So this is like throwaway work uh, to try to teach myself component systems. So I have these components. I have the input component. So you can, um, there's one key you can hit for firing in one of four directions and another key set for moving. And I kind of had that, uh, if you see it on the bottom here, as I move, uh, I had the caps lock on. Uh, there we go. 
as I'm moving, you can see it says J or I or L or K. And as I'm moving, I, there's also fire keys that I could be hitting. So the, the, those two key clusters are coming in here for the input component. Uh, monster is just a tag right now, but anything that uh, data specific to monsters I'll be putting there. Uh, position component, tile component. The tile is just what graphics to draw, right? Oh, thanks for the follow, Honest Dan, and Tape, Moose, and Zynel. Thank you for the follows, guys. So those are my components so far. Systems I have are the rendering system. That's just basically building up a JSON object, which it is sending over a WebSocket. So that when it arrives on the front end here, we can see it. Actually, I guess I got to reload. Let's reload. So you can see here, can you see that? Or is that, let's not cover chat. So each, each of these is the output of the rendering system where we just get where, uh, okay, that's not blocked by my camera, is it? Where each sprite is and what to draw. And then um, I'll show you if, every time I change what input I'm doing, there's another message sent on the website in the other direction saying what movement key or what fire key I'm doing. So yeah, rendering system is just building the message to be sent. Uh, player movement is translating these movement keys to actually changing the player's position. The AI right now is just seeing where the player is and then deciding whether which direction to move. So we're gonna be building more of this into the system, but before I actually do more of this, I wanna make a standalone uh, project, uh, space for this because I'm sharing this space uh, for my main game and I was having trouble with IntelliSense. So let me start a new directory for this. Oh, and I forgot to log into my Git. Okay, there we go. Uh, the null move key just means uh, you, you release the key. So this means like I, I'm hold, holding down K, now I released K, now I'm holding down J, then I released J. So that's what null means. There is no, no movement key. And thanks for the follow, Tubby Goth. Hey there, Epic Unknown. How's it going? We got raided by Honest Dan. So, actually, I have some slots. Now, Honest Dan is a VIP because he's Honest Dan. Shouldn't he be VIP on every single channel? I think so. All right. Uh, yeah, standalone project time. So, I'm going to make a new shell for this. Put the shell there. Okay, let's make a new game called Iron Glove uh, Workspace. And we're going to copy a couple things in here. So I'm going to steal the uh, editor config and the CMake and the license. Well, no, not the license. I want the public license. This is all going to be MIT license on GitHub. So yeah, these to start with. And actually I'll steal the license and Remy from Excalibur. That's what I'll do because those are MIT license. All right, so we're going to go back to Git here. And I'm going to pull in the repositories I need for, um, that I already have in GitHub, so... Do, do, do. I'm okay, Raimu. I'm uh, not used to getting raided so early in my stream, so this is kind of cool. It makes me a little nervous. Because I want to do a good thing for you guys and make it funny and entertaining. And I, I'm not used to doing that. Okay. Here's the back-end repository. So git clone that, please. And the front end is somewhere here. There it is. There's the front end. I have such lovely names for my repositories. Front end is iron glove, back end is iron glove, back end. Sweet. And we do need, definitely need web sockets. Git clone those guys. Uh, I need my system abstractions library for sure. So yeah, we're just making a smaller workspace just to work on the prototype so that um, 
the project isn't so friggin' huge and doesn't uh, confuse IntelliSense. I need JSON. You take it back for ten. Oh no, no. <laughs> I'm not calling my friend and Jeremy and Greg. Hmm. I did call a tool the other day Bob because I'm like, I don't have a name for it. Let's call him Bob. That's a good point, Cobalt. I should have called it Jeremy and Greg. Okay. Uh, this one I need. This is the glue between the sockets and the web server, oh, which I need as well, the uh, web stuff. Web stuff is HTTP. Clone all this stuff. All right. Don't need hash functions. Actually, we might be good. So let's. Oh, message headers. Definitely need that. All right. We'll find out if I'm missing anything. So we will. Okay. I need to. Did I? I did I make a copy of the CMIG list? I did. So let's um, edit that first. Okay. You can uh, lurk. That's fine. Going away tomorrow. I hope you're going on a glorious vacation where you will relax and unwind. That's my hope. Let's see. Uh, um, uh, yes. See, uh, backup one directory. This workspace. This CMake. Okay. So we're going to change some of the things. Uh, workspace. I don't even think I need this, this variable. We're not testing. This is not a testing stream. <laughs> okay. This is all... We don't need Google test. Uh, yes, this is a lot... Boilerplate stuff I like to have. Uh, we don't need AWS. We don't need Google test. LibreSSL, Zlib. Well, actually... I might need Zlib. Hold off, hold off on removing that stuff. Mm. Something tells me I'm going to use Base64 also. Pretty sure I don't need this stuff. Oh, I need URI and UTF-8. I forgot about those guys. Uh. Yes, yes. They're... They are dependency to, of dependencies. Feed the dependencies of the dependencies. Okay. And don't need that. All right. So back end. We good. Okay. Let's try this. So close window. No. Close folder. Open folder. New folder. Yes. Let's see what errors I have. Okay, select a kit. I will select 64-bit Visual Studio 2017 community. Yay! Uses the Ninja generator for CMake. So a lot, a lot of people hate CMake. It is sort of a real bitch when it comes to pulling in other people's stuff if they don't write their CMake files very well. I see, like, I'm missing base 64. I knew it! Um, but, um... A lot of stuff I do on my stream um, from scratch, and so the only person I have to bitch about is me. And so far, I haven't had very many problems with CMake. It just looks kind of uh, gross at times. Okay, yeah, so that, all right, that's maybe why it was complaining. Let me see if I actually need Zlib. I don't remember. The best patch for a broken build system. Yeah, it looks like I do need Zlib. Okay, Zlib. Pull in Zlib. I want a special. I want my branch of Zlib. Uh, get branch. Oh, I want the CMake friendly branch that I made. This is one of those examples where CMake's um, other people's CMake is not so good. So I need. I, I made changes to Zlib to uh, make it CMake friendly. Check out. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, did I? Uh, 
include it at the top level? I did not. Let's do that. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's done up here. Oh, it's done right there. Okay, never mind. Okay, so it failed because it couldn't open Google test. Oh, snap. That's right. It always includes the unit test. Okay, fine. We'll end the Google tests. Uh, one directory up. Uh, and actually, let's pick the branch I want from um, this workspace. Same one. Uh, hold on a sec. Where is it? Here it is. Oh, I guess it is called master. Fine. Oh, but we're pulling in that specific revision. Okay, that's right. So clone it. Google test is from Google. And I'm going to check out a specific revision of it. This one. Because I don't trust what they might have put onto their tip. All right, so let's try again. Oh, um, I probably need to add back in the unit, unit test stuff, aren't I? Um, or maybe not. Oh, uh, yeah. I removed a section for Google test, didn't I? I have to add it back. This thing I need. Right there. And what else? This section. Uh, right here. All right, try again. I think it's building, folks. Oh, maybe not. Missing something. <laughs> hash. I'm using hash functions from where? WebSocket tests. Okay, fine. I didn't think I need the hash function stuff. Hash, 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 hash. Here you are. So, uh, git clone the hash functions. And then pull them in here. Thank you for the follow. Wish you could write C, make files in C++. Yeah. Be nice if um, they gave us a build solution along with the uh, the programming language, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be smart? Let's go design a language to do that. Better yet, let's pick another language where um, people are already doing that. I'm kind of stuck in my C++ ways. Hey, but look, we got everything to build. So now I, I have a much smaller workspace that we can now move to. So we'll stop that server, go to the smaller workspace version of it. And I just have to tell Windows Security that yes, this program is allowed to use the network. And um, we'll go and npm start the other guy. npm start. So while that's running, Ah, interesting. I forget what you have to do when you uh, clone a React project that you didn't create locally. Is it npm install? Yeah, you guys know better than me. The server is not in, well, the server's in both workspaces now. See, this one's running from the new one. So this, the back end's fine. Uh, it's just I needed to, uh, I guess we're pulling in all the de dependencies, correct? All right, so that should be, well, that we'll, we'll let that run for a while. And instead, uh, trying to remember how to use my own tool here. It is uh, select main. Oh, we need to make it into a, work, a Git workspace. Git init. There we go. Select main. All right. And let's just do status. It will um, it'll tell me that there are a bunch of repositories that 
aren't uh, being tracked yet. We'll just add them. Actually, uh, didn't I make that part of it? The add, I can just do all. Ah, oh, yes, add all. There we go. Add them all. There we go. Then let's see if I, it shouldn't have changed anything but the root, right? Okay, so then it's git add everything. Commit one monster thing called initial revision. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't, I don't want it to be adding build stuff. Okay, that was a mistake. It's adding all the build files in. I guess control C just uh, does a clean uh, abort. Okay, so yeah, I want to add build VS code to the ignore file. I thought I had that in there. I guess not. Oh, um, that's correct. I didn't have it. Hey there, bug found. I'm finding bugs all the time. I, you have a you have the greatest username because you're always being found. Okay, I had some rules here. Yes. Let's pull them rules in. There we go. Now, it should be safe to add all. Get add all of them. There we go. Actually, before I commit, I should probably double check that this license, license is not the right copyright date. Now it is. And read me. Yeah, let's, let's change this. Iron... Glove. Iron Glove is a quick prototype game with using an ECS entity component system. It's inspired by the uh, 1985 Atari game Gauntlet. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, this is old. Uh, usage. Build the back end. Iron glove back end. Build the front end. And glove. Uh, using using C make. Uh, using. I guess we want to make this pretty, right? So using npm install followed by npm start, which I never did, right? So that was back here. Let's try the npm start again. I think that's going to work. Uh, unit tests. I'm not even going to mention the unit tests. And I'm going to remove all this stuff that I copied. Let's get an yeah, let me get an inventory of what I ended up pulling in. Base sixty four hash Okay, I don't have hash listed here. Eh, let's we wanna list that now. Eh, let's not list let's not list them. I'm in a hurry. Building this is all my normal building stuff. Um boilerplate. Compiling, linking, etc. Okay, yeah, we'll just go with that. Initial revision. Okay, so the uh, front end now is relocated, and it should still work. Yay. Ow! He hit me. He's gooey. Oh, wait, they just wanted a, a hug, that's all. All right, um... Yeah, so the whole the whole point of this is making a smaller workspace base that I can now put up onto GitHub and let you guys pick it, pick up if you want. So, where's my GitHub link? There it is. I'm just off screen because I'm super paranoid about showing GitHub on screen. I don't know why. 
just creating the repository. And I'm going back to here. Git remote add origin. Com Rimu eighty three fifty four Iron Glove Works Space dot Git Git Push Origin Master And after a flourish, there there we go. Cool, so it's up on my GitHub now the the overall workspace and it's pulling in however many um subcomponents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen subcomponents. A lot of them are small libraries I made on stream, but the important ones for the um, ECS are the Iron Glove backend. And if you wanted to see the the uh, the React based front end, it's this one. It looks like that one has a change in it. Why did the package JSON change? It didn't. It's just line feed will be replaced by character turn line feed. Okay, so we don't need those. So uh, check out. A little trick here to um, get it to um, no longer look like it changed. All right. Cool. So back on track. Actually um, adding stuff to the ECS. Hopefully I didn't lose a whole lot of people doing that boring CMake workspace setup stuff. So we're going to do more ECS right now. All right. Do not allow moving into other colliders. Um, did I want to introduce the collider component now? From yesterday I had that I had wanted to have a collider component to mark the, the things that you can collide into so that we don't end up colliding into the floor, for example. I think I'll do that. So we'll add a collider component. Uh, close the things. We're going to go into the back end here. Here are components and systems. Does Git need a new line at the end of files? Not really. It's just something that I like to have. By the way, um, this editor config helps with that. Insert final new line true with the dot editor config. And then most uh, major editors will, will automatically add that to the end of the line uh, when you're editing. Git doesn't care, so I don't really, I don't really, um, at the files that Git itself is looking at, I don't, I don't really look too closely. Oh, did, did that show up as like, uh, a warning? This one was just talking about the ends of each line. Um, you, when you look at a, a diff, sometimes it will say that the last line is missing in another line, but, um, that's mostly for your benefit. Git doesn't care. Okay, so let's add, let's just take one component and duplicate it and call it Collider. And we don't, we don't have, we don't actually know what state, if any, we'll have. Thanks for the follow, Malzbixi? Malzbixi? Sorry if I'm butchering your name. All right. I do appreciate the follows. You guys are awesome people. So this is Collider. Get automatically recognizes Linux and Windows endlines. Translates them. Yeah. So I'm using the whatever mode of Git where it locally is. Uh, can you guys see that? No. Here. Um, I'll hide myself briefly. Down here is a CRLF. It's l checking that out locally. And then when it checks it in, it's uh, making it uh, neutral. I guess LF, because Git is a, a born from Linux, right? So for me, when I check it out, it'd be CRLF. If you're on Linux and you check it out, it'd be LF. Unless you had something non-default. All right, so Collider, component, And I need to go in here and add it. And um, this is one of the things I've been learning from yesterday's... Uh, prototyping is that there's a lot of copying here that probably could be handled more intelligently using templates or maybe um, some other trick to uh, combine the common parts of these things. But yeah, we're, we have 
our lists of components. Because the idea is most systems will be picking one list and iterating through it. And why does that not... Oh, hold on, I know why. Components should include the new component header. All right, and then that shows up there. See, IntelliSense is much, much happier today with such a smaller project. Colliders. So it's just a little bit of uh, grunt work here I have to do, which um, one of the uh, postmortems of this will be try not to to make such boilerplate stuff, but combine it intelligently. I'll have to think about how to do that. Because all of this is pretty much the same. The in, this is the entity, the component component manager, so to speak, components plural, and all it really does is it holds on to all the lists. And if you ask for a component, it it or list, it gives it gives it to you, and it can it can create new ones. And I guess we'll have to add um, destroy as well, or remove. But uh, right now uh, there there is no destruction in the game, so <laughs> we're we're actually good for now. And there we go. We oh no one. Oh, because the game is running. Yes, stop playing. It, the game is crashing every time I cl quit it, and I think I know why. But I don't know if I want to do anything about it yet. Right now, the game launches a. Uh, where is it? Oh, the main program. Whenever you get a new connection, it uh, starts a new game. And one of the things that the game start does is it starts a, a worker thread. And um, the only way that worker thread stops is if the uh, worker th if, is if the connection is closed, uh, which happens uh, somewhere here. On WebSocket closed, we uh, join our worker thread here. But let's say they don't connect, they don't disconnect ever, and instead you uh, stop the server. Well. This never gets called, and so we end up quitting the program while our worker thread is running, and it causes it to crash. But I don't know if I care to fix X since this is just a prototype. All right, so we have a collider. I was going to add a system, right? No, I was going to update a system. Don't allow moving into... So we have to make uh, the both the players and the monsters colliders. That is in game where they're added. Because they're, they're, they don't have a nice place yet, right? I have add player, add monster. So, I don't know if they should go here or not, but that's where they are. So, we're adding Collider. There, now the player has a Collider, and now the monster has a Collider. Uh, Windows doesn't kill the non-main threads first. You have to do it. So if you don't, they continue to run, and it, if they're still running at the moment your program quits, then it basically crashes. <laughs> I'll show you uh, how. I'll show you that. I tell. Oh, I don't even have a debug configuration. I should set that one up, shouldn't I? Uh, Windows. So the program is the uh, is the back end. Program name is that. Build VS Code Iron Glove Backend Iron Glove EXE. So let's run it. So here it is running in this little window, right? And let's say I connect to it with the game. So connect. So there's the game running. And now if I hit Control C here, there's the crash. If I hit retry, you can see where it is. It's um, trying to. It's running the destructor for the thread, but the thread's still running. So basically nothing tells the thread to stop. And, and when you get to the point where it must be stopped, basically the destructor for the thread object, it says, Hey, I'm still running here. Terminate. <laughs> joinable, joinable for a thread means it's still running, right? So if the thread is still running, terminate the program. Right, so that's, this is happening because the game is being destroyed uh, as, as part of... The unwinding of main. Since main is the one ultimately holding the list of games, this games thing, right here. The set of games, right? Sh set of pointers to games. So when, when we return out of main, it's destroying that set, which destroys the game, 
which tries to destroy the thread, and the thread says, uh-uh, I'm still running. Go, um, go pound sand, basically, and then that causes a crash. That's literally a crash now function. So yeah. I don't know if I, if I care to clean that up, though. Because if I'm telling the backend to quit, I don't care if it quits cleanly or not. There's no state I'm saving. All right, so... I added the colliders for players and monsters. So I guess the, the trick now is we um, don't want a player movement to go into a collider. Actually, let's do monster first. There we go, monster. So... Something really simple, I guess, would be uh, we're going to get all the colliders. Colliders info. And then I guess what we'll do is when, they, when it decides to move in a direction, we'll check to see if there's a collider in the way. And if so, move in a different direction. So here's the code right now that decides when to move horizontally or vertically. I guess what I can do is, if we want to move horizontally, but then something is in the way, we can uh, change our mind. And move vertically instead. If we can. We always want to be, the monsters always want to be moving towards the player, and it's really dumb right now. Uh, I don't feel like putting in a full A star thing here. I could, but don't feel like it. Just want to do something really simple. So how about if I move this? Not move it, but duplicate this for now, and uh, we'll we'll be using this code in a second. Let's just record the fact that we which direction we want to move. So. Int uh, mx is the direction, is uh, how many we're going to move in the x direction. So this is just mx. And next, let's actually do all of these. So it'll in MX and MY it'll record which uh, which way along each axis it would it would like to move if it were to pick that axis, right? And I guess what we'll do is we'll see we'll we'll see well let's have a helper function. If we're gonna pull this out. If we would rather move horizontally and there is no obstacle in our way, so is obstacle in the way. So we'll have to pass in the collider info and the our desired position. So that would be position x plus dx and position y. I guess we want to negate that, right? So if we want to move horizontally and there's no obstacle in the way horizontally, then we'll move horizontally, right? And that's just uh, position x plus equals dx. Otherwise, as long as there's no obstacle in the way, for the y direction, we'll move that way. Otherwise, we're not going to move at all. Sound good? Sound good to me. This needs to be uh, plus dy. And that's, uh, oh, hold on. Wrong one. This one. Plus dy. Okay, and then I just need to make this function. Uh, let's pretty this up a little bit. There we go. Let's make this helper function, shall we? Helper functions, especially if they're free, I like to put in an anonymous namespaces. All right, so it's going to take in the 
uh, colliders info, which is a components list. So it's a components components list. So const components components list colliders info. And then our x and our y, right? So it's pretty simple. We're just going to loop through and see if there's anything there. Again, this is not very good performance. It doesn't have to be. It's a prototype. For a real game, you'd want it to be a little bit more smart about this. All right, so it's a collider. If colliders i dot, oh, wait a minute. Uh, we have to get the position equivalent, right? So, oh, that means I'll have to have access to components. Shoot. Oh, can't be helped. All right, so we get the position component from the collider component. All right, so the, uh, let's just get a reference to the collider. Const auto collider equals colliders i. So then it's collider. And if the if there's no position, so this would be sort of weird, but if the if the collider has no position, we skip it. Right? Now if the position x equals x and the position y equals y, then yeah, there's something there, right? Return true. If we fall out, we return false. Okay, there we go. Hopefully I didn't miss anything there. What is that telling me? I don't know what that's telling me. I think that's stale. Little hiccup from IntelliSense, yes. There's really no problem there. Ignore the man behind the curtain there. Uh, let's just try this out. So we run the game again, and the monster should not run into us. Uh-oh. Where'd they go? They disappeared! Try this again. They vanished. Uh, what happened to them? I don't know. I screw something up here? Oh, uh, not D. M. The movement direction. My bad. Don't snitch. What could, what would playing with scissors be snitching about? Let's run the game again. Hit connect. Okay, there we go. So now they won't run into me, right? And they won't run into each other. Look at that. They're nice little ghosts. Although he doesn't want to, for some reason, he doesn't want to move that direction. I don't wonder why. See, now they're, now they're um, keeping their distance. Although that's weird. Weird that that guy doesn't want to move. He should be trying to move over to here. For some reason, he's not. I wonder why. Should I fix that bug? I should probably figure out why. He he should be like, I want to move there, but I can't, so let me move that way. And he should be sitting there. Maybe distance MX is int. So MX, or the DX is 1, the DY is 1. So, um... It'll try, actually it should be trying to move horizontally first. Yeah, I don't know. Uh-oh, did I get shots fired at me? Is this a, is this a... Let's see what Adam said. You can't hear the audio. Uh, what, what is this? Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> He's saying there's a bug in the scr screenshot. Remove my window. <laughs> yeah, Playing With Sisters likes to watch both of our streams chat at the same time. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, what if they're piled on top of each other? Okay, now that's fine. He doesn't want to move, though. Do I work? This is my work. I uh, used to have... Here, I'll, I'll link it. I used to have a job doing... Uh, Tool, like it says, tools and R&D in multimedia. And I kind of went freelance and to take this one opportunity to try to do something on my own. So this is sort of my job. I started my own company to uh, try to make a game. And if it doesn't work out, probably it won't because, what is it, 95% of startups fail? Then I'll have to go back and get another job at some point. But yeah, I'm taking, taking my chance right now to do something. I did something wrong here where he doesn't want to move right in uh in the same column you're just kidding well that's fine <laughs> L quite literally the answer to do you work is yes and it is a uh, self-employment all right what's going on here is it because i have no player that is the player's position right oh i love you too four blocks let's see So MX should be either 1 or minus 1. Oh, wait a minute. Did I, com I did compute DX. Wouldn't this be... Uh, no. Th these are absolute, this absolute value, right? So if it's 1... If DX, and, uh, DX is 1 and DY is both... If they're both 1, it'll fall through this, right? And I'll say, is there an obstacle in the way... Vertically. Hold on. Right, it'll try to move vertically. Oh. I yeah, okay. I know what it is. It um if it if it if it if it uh goes into the else because that's not true, it'll only test the vertical direction and never test the horizontal. So, I can't think of a more elegant way to do this, but I but it would be to have another else at the end to try to repeat the horizontal direction. I don't know. You guys could probably think of a more elegant way to do it, but I'm just going to repeat the horizontal one last time. And we've got to quit the game before we can build it. Oh, I didn't know that. Hit, hitting F7 lets me pick a different window. Oh, that's cool. Oh, no. It's a command history of some kind. And now it's gone, because I'm inside the command. <laughs> Discovering things all the time by hitting the wrong keys. All right, start the game. Okay, don't hit, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Good thing I can move, otherwise I would have been trapped in the corner there. Okay, that's nice. They keep their distance now, and they will slide into place vertically if they need to. So in the real game, if these were not ghosts, but like uh, those... Um, what were they called? Grunts? They would be clubbing me to death right now. Boom, 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 and my health would be going down. And uh, being ghosts, what we're going to have them do is in if they, if they are blocked by the player, they'll just immediately damage the player and disappear. All right, so that was that's the um, monster's collision, but the player is allowed to pass through the ghost with impunity right now. Let's fix that. That would be... Uh, the same kind of code. Maybe I do want to make this one uh, shared. Where would I put that? Maybe in uh, components? Yeah, let's actually move this to components. Why not make components our dumping ground? 
it has the colliders list and it is the component so it doesn't need to be told those things so we're just going to move it out and over to here is that a good job? I thought it was a crappy job but I feel I felt like that it could be improved and this is that we don't need this anymore. So, we don't need to call ourselves. And colliders info we don't need. It is colliders. It's a vector. So it's that dot data. Actually, we don't need it at all. This is simply collider size. And that's it, right? How can this is... Oh, hold on. That's because I'm using the pimple pattern. These are hiding behind the... Impulse. There we go. Alright, so AI... We'll say components dot. See, this is one of those things I don't know if this is correct to do. Just to make the component manager the dumping ground of uh, common logic. I don't suppose it's bad. So this is just, this should just build, right? As long as I am not running the game. Okay. So let's do the player movement. So it's just going to be a, a little bit more work here, right? We move to the left if we're not on the left edge already and no uh obstacle in the way, right? And why is it not like that? Oh, it's stale. Yeah, just a prototype. Just a prototype. And this was less than 10. And that's plus one. And this is y greater than 0 and y minus 1. And this is y less, what was it, 10? Actually, I think 10 was too great. We were falling off the bottom. I'll make it, I'll make it uh, 8 instead. All right, let's try that. So now we shouldn't be able to move into the ghost, which means I need to be quick when I first start the game, or I will get trapped. Connect. All right, let's move. Yep. Can't move out in the way. So if I if I were to manage to get stuck in the corner here, it would be bad. You can't trap me. Okay, maybe you can. Let's let him trap me. Ah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Only thing I can do is restart the game. All right, cool. So now we it, we can't move into walls or other enemies. All right, uh, that's progress, right? I should check that in. All right, added a collider and obeying the collider, right? Add colliders. Uh, don't allow movement uh, into them. All right, what's next on the list? Add walls. Okay, you know what that means. It's Raimu art time. I need a wall tile. So, I'm going to launch a sprite. And uh, I'm going to start with a tile that I already had. Because it has the palette that I want. Here's my glorious Raimu art hero. And we'll save him as a wall. Okay, now let's erase everything. It's E, right? Eraser tool, and I want slightly bigger. All right. Wall time. Let's make walls brown. Hmm. Or I can just make it really plain for now, right? So, flood. How do I flood fill? G. There we go. There's a the wall. 
I guess we can add a little bit of character to it. I still have this cough from, uh, had the, caught the flu over the weekend. I had a cough earlier in the month, and then I got over it, and then I got the flu, which gave me the cough back. It sucks. All right, so let's add character to this wall, uh, like little cracks or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It probably looks really weird. Let's see what it looks like. So there's that. And then I had uh, this texture packer UI. And we're using the free version, yes. And we're going to load our assets. There we are. There. And oh, this I need to export this as a ping. Uh, export it as wall.ping. Okay, so we're adding sprites. There's the wall. And save. Publish. Oh. No, disable pro features, yes. Publish. Okay, so that should show up here under... Oh, wait a minute. Actually, that wrote to the other directory, didn't it? I wanted to show up here under asset. Yeah, it's the old directory. So I need to f I need to move stuff over. Hold on. So reveal and explore, please. Go back to the old project. Let's just take that entire assets folder. No, actually, no, we don't need to. I could though. Yeah, let's do let's do the entire assets folder. Copy and paste here. Replace files. There we go. And then I need also the... Um, actually, no, I don't. I can simply have this point to the new project. So open project, go to the new project. There we go. I don't know why, but it opened it into a new window. Okay, so publish. Oh, wait a minute. The publish directory is different. Too bad I can't make this a relative path. Actually, let's see if I can. What if I do dot dot slash? Does that work? Maybe it did. Look at that. It might have worked. It could have worked. Let's see. It should show up here under... Uh... Oh yeah, look at that. So there's my wall. It's called wall. And the front end should be able to load it now. Uh, okay, let's look for that. There we go. So I need to add it to my list here. I had a repeated list here because I didn't... I, I'm, I'm sure it's possible for me to get the list just by looking at this JSON file. Because these are the keys of the frames object. But um, I was in a hurry. So anyway, we'll, we'll have the wall texture loaded. That means that if it shows up we will have walls. So let's make walls. All right, so let's add a wall. Factory, add wall. So walls are colliders and positions and tiles only, right? And the tile is wall. You can do a require.json and then, uh, okay. Well, the one thing I'm wondering, though, is since I am already, um, I'm already pulling it in through Pixie, does Pixie have a copy of it? See, I'm already adding it through the Pixie loader. So, like, it makes me want to re not have a redundant require of it, but ask the Pixie loader for, hey, could you give me that JSON back? I want to, I want to look at the keys for, a l for, for, you know, just for a little. What am I trying to say? I just want to look at the keys, Pixie Loader. You keep the rest for your graphics. <laughs> um, but So I was going to look that up later. So anyway, we have the add wall. Let's add some walls. And then I don't need to have that um, boundary check, right? Let's just add a few walls in the middle to begin with. Uh, five, and, five by five. 
Let's add a little niche. So five, uh, six, five, and five, six, right? Let's try that out. He's not running, is he? Oh, he is. Okay, stop. Build. And run. Connect. Hey, look at that. I got walls. The walls look ugly as hell, though. They should block those guys. Yeah, look at that. And can I get him stuck behind that wall? Yes, I can. He's dumb. He doesn't have a star pathing, so he doesn't go. Actually, I think even in the real Gauntlet game, they um, have really silly pathing like that. Um, usually because you don't need complex pathing when you, there's a crowd of mobs anyway. They'll just get in each other's way constantly as, as it is. Um, I really think that that wall needs to be improved. Don't you? That wall art is horrible. What can I do? Because I'm not a great artist. I suppose I can um, make these cracks a little bit less. Uh, maybe just reduce the number of cracks I have. I probably should have it a crack that goes from one side to the other, like that. Looks more like a rust colored. Uh, actually, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but the cool thing is, I don't have to do much to uh, change things. I just export it. And uh, this should what? Shouldn't that reload? Oh, wait. I, was, I had the wrong thing open in A sprite. Save as the other directory. It didn't update it. Do I have to delete it and add it again? That's weird. There's probably a button to uh, update it, isn't there? Publish. How come this is always rem trying to... Yeah, disable, please. Hmm, yes. Zero to zero. Sounds good to me. Uh, oh, that's a pro feature. Yeah, don't try to make me use tro pro features, please. All right. That should be picked up immediately, right? No, I guess I have to reload. No, it didn't pick it up. Uh, what did I do wrong? Saving to the correct space. Yeah, that's the old art. I think I just saved it to the wrong folder. Uh, oh, I have the wrong project open? No, I have the correct project open. Save project, publish sheet. That's weird. Is this folder the wrong folder? Oh, why is it putting it there? The directory is relative to some weird directory name. Okay, I guess I can't... <sighs> I, was, I was hoping it would be relative to the uh, where the project... So this assets folder, so one up and then down, but it's doing it from some other weird point. Okay, yeah, I don't want it to go there. I want it to go... Projects. I guess it's got to be hard coded. Yes, it does. It, there we go. Okay, 
Now it'll be updated, right? If I reload. There we go. What happens if I uh, chop off the uh, corners of these? You see, they're updated there. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, and I'll I'll fix the walls later. <laughs> those 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 are good enough walls for now. All right, so we have walls. Next, what? I think I wanted to add floors next. Right, position and tile, but no collider. So uh, le something less visually um, outstanding. So uh, save as floor. And let's erase everything. Floor, floor tile. How about something? How about just dots? So there was a way to pick the background color for this, right? View the preferences. Yeah. So let's pick a random color, because I want gray. Let's just have dots, so some dots. Save, export as floor. And then pick it up from here. And save, publish. Why does it keep doing this? Disable. All right, so now we have floor. All right, I got a floor. So let's add some floors. The floor has no collider. Just a position and a tile. So let's do this a little bit more intelligently. So we'll say for y is 0, y is less than or equal to 8, plus plus y, and then for x is 0, x less than or equal to 10, plus plus x, and here are conditions. We'll do some wall conditions, otherwise it's a floor. So let's just pull this in directly. So. If x is 5 and y is 5, or, or, so 6 here and 6 here. So that's just to keep those same walls that I had. All right, now what does it look like? Look at that. I think we need to draw the floor first, though, because the floor is showing up on top of my guy. Hmm. I'll have to change. I'll have to have the rendering needs to be a little bit more intelligent, right? Hello, hello, Pyro Shade. Look at me do a horrible art in my prototype game. <laughs> Shouldn't Pixie have the option to add a background? Yeah, but I wa actually want floor tiles in my game. 
disable the cache. I don't think it was a cache problem, so yeah. It's good to know that that's how you do it, though. All right, so uh, let me fix my rendering. The rendering should not put the floor on top of the the uh, the uh, player. So we really need to we really need to um, sort the tiles, right? Hey there, three D extended. How am I doing? I'm doing pretty well. Programmer art is a, is a necessary evil. Yeah. So right now the problem is um, the floor is being drawn on top of my player. I want the floor to be drawn last. I guess I could do two rendering passes, right? So actually, why don't why don't I just why don't I do this? Why don't I have a Z level for the tile? Wouldn't that make more sense? We'll have a Z level, and then we'll sort by that. So, render, hold on. The default Z will be zero, and when we add a floor, we'll set the Z level a lo lower than that, right? Or how do, I, what's, uh, what's the right direction for Z? Negative one would be below, I guess. Actually, I like the idea of z z the floor being zero and everything else being above zero. Let's just do this for now. There we go. Can you explain the impl pattern? I got a command for that. It's yeah for separating interface from implementation. It's so that when you have a a class, a, an object with methods, so like components, that we can hide. The, not only the implementation of these methods, but also hide any variables, any private variables. So, for example, a component manager has the list of components. I don't want them to be directly accessed. I want them to be accessed through the get components of type. By the way, I've been watching my past streams. Okay, cool. Hope you have been enjoying them. <laughs> yeah, the pimple pattern is really just to get better separation. So that the, that um, you don't have to list your private member variables here. You just have a opaque type pointed to, uh, and um, put them all here where the, it's actually defined. Okay. So the rendering system just needs to sort by Z order. So right now we're constructing them directly into JSON. Instead, I think we should uh, make we should make a vector that we can sort. Actually, wouldn't a multi-map be um, perfect? Then we just iterate through the multi-map. The multi-map would be of uh, Z orders. Yeah, let's abuse, let's abuse multi-map, shall we? So we'll have a multi-map from a Z level to JSON object. Uh, sp sprites, sprite. Sprites by Z order. There we go. Kind of reminds you of the weak maps pattern for JS classes. E okay. Yeah, it's well, it's for, uh, it's for several things. The the header becomes easier because I don't have to include all of the um, he other header files that would be needed in the implementation. So like, for example, this needs vector, right? I don't have to expose the fact that we need vector from our header file. So it's just, it's like having a clean interface. The interface only includes headers that are needed by the interface and the things needed by the implementation are separate. So just cleanliness really. Uh, what? Oh, this should be value. Okay, so sprites by Z order. We will uh, insert. I think this is the way you do it, right? Uh, okay. What? How do we insert again? It's by uh, pair, right? Uh, int. It would be a uh, tile Z. 
Actually, I think we can do it with the initializer list. That's a little bit cleaner. So insert tile Z and then the object. And then down here we'll we'll loop through. So for const my mic is drifting away from me. Const auto sprite by z order in sprites by z order. Add this dot second. All right, let's see if that did it. Keep forgetting to quit the game before I rebuild it. <laughs> All right. Now, no, it didn't work, did it? Didn't work. Oh, maybe it's sorting in the wrong order. Probably. Actually, you know what it is, probably more likely. Hey, what am I thinking? Um, it probably Pixie's doing this to me. Because, uh, yeah. Probably the order in which uh, Pixie is drawing them, so... We need to give Pixie a different drawing order, right? So I don't just want to pass the... Yeah, I don't need this multi-map garbage. Don't need this. We'll go back to uh, just adding them. But we'll include the Z order in the, in the um, object. So it's Z, right? Okay, so this is something I'm not so familiar with. Maybe you guys know, but um, how do you tell Pixie JS the Z order of a tile? Uh, I think this is where I do it here. No, that's um, that's making a new sprite. Here's where we add it. But before I add it, there should be something to set the Z, Z order from it, right? I guess I can look it up. You guys, do you guys happen to know? Whoa, <laughs> how'd that get so zoomed in? Uh, it's control zero, right? All right, point, um, pixie JS sprite Z index. Z order, here we go. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Well, maybe it is. This has it in here. Sprite.z order. Sprite data.z. Let's try it out. Connect. No, it didn't work. Z index. Protected, how do I set it? If a container has the sortable children properties set to true. Oh, higher would we'll move towards the end. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, so it's Z index, not Z order. No, it's still, I can still see the dots drawing on top of me. Uh, it's maybe hard for you guys to see, so let me uh, make the floor a little bit, um, let's give the floor some extra character here. Let's have a little 
Let's have a little diamond show up on the floor. Export and then pull it in here. Publish. Restart. Or reload, I mean. Oh, I picked the wrong color too. <laughs> anyway, you can see that the ghosts have little stars on them that they shouldn't have. Uh pick a different color. Gr green. Okay, so let me do a uh, negative of that just to make sure that it, that's not how I screwed it up. Yeah, see, it's not working at all. So I'm wondering if do I have to have it in a sorted container? That's possible. Well, there's a property. I wonder, okay. What am I adding it to? The stage. Maybe the stage needs to have that property set. How do I set this? So the stage is like a built-in. Um, okay. On setup, I should be able to uh, set it, right? Setup. Or is it here that I do it? No, after after it loads all the textures, we'll, we'll do it here. This dot app dot stage dot sorted sortable children. I'm totally guessing now. I don't know. I have no idea if this will work. And then uh, Z index. Let's try that. Nope, not working. <laughs> to do xc.js uh, make stage sortable children stage sortable children It writes the value for z-index, it's the back end. So actually I should verify that, shouldn't I? Uh, connect. Okay, kind of hard to see. Z-index is zero for the, all the floor, and the monsters and hero are z-index one. So that's correct. It's just that it's drawing them not respect. I think it's just drawing them um, in this order in which I have them added. Is that true? There are exactly 100 and, 101 tiles. <laughs> uh, anyway. I don't think that's the way to, that it's done. This is not the documentation I'm looking for. <laughs> Let's just start from here. Yes. I want the... Uh, no, I don't want any of this stuff. I want resources. Here we go. Documentation. Pixie application, right? What's the stage?
AC container. Sort. I need a container. I can't just use the stage and have the stage sorted. That's a bummer. Because the stage is a pixie container. Anyway, I don't see anything about sorting. So, like, how would I make a new container that actually sorts? <sighs> Is it a special kind of container? Looks like I already had a API. I want to keep an API window up. I could manually sort them, but I'd rather let Pixie do it. There should be a way to do it, right? Sort Z index. It was this demo, right? Is it just that they're adding them to different groups? I mean, I guess we could do it that way. I could just have a, each group by uh, have its own Z order. Sorting is true. Oh, it's a it's a display group, and that there's a sorting flag. Hmm. Let's see that display group. A display group. No such thing as display group. It might maybe looking at a different version of Pixie. That's Pixie V3, that's why. Uh and what am I using? <laughs> Good question. I am using version four. Okay. So this is gonna help really. Yeah, Z order examples outdated. See what what the uh, post says. Really, I need a plugin? That's why I couldn't find it. It's a, it's a plugin. This is that same example, but for V4. Got it. Okay. So why did they bother having a uh, Z index at all? Maybe maybe it there isn't. And I was just um, not understanding this. Uh, it was a uh, sprite, right? Right. Yeah, Sprite doesn't have Z index. I don't know what I was reading that said it did. So there is no Z index. It's through that plugin. So how do I, let's see, how do I do this?
Oh, okay. So it's like attached to the sprite and the plugin uses it. Update stage calls on sort. I don't like examples like this. They say stage, but what is a stage? Is it a pixie stage? <sighs> I am come, actually coming around to the suggestion er, that someone said earlier that I could just sort it myself. <laughs> That was not Zane, right? Maybe not Zane was onto something. Manually sort them, right? How would I do that? That would be something in container, right? Children is read only. Would I have to remove them and then add them back at specific indices? I guess I would just um, add them in a certain order, right? Yeah, I could do that, but I kind of want to, I want to let the uh, front end deal with the ordering. Maybe this is what I want. But what if something is in the index we're setting? I guess we can try it out, so... That's in the... on server render. Or, yeah, on server render. So message sprites we want to sort that of a script sort that sorts it in place I guess that's okay so message dot Sprites, hold on a sec, anchor my, uh, my microphone a little bit better. Please not adjust the screen graphics settings only 1080p because your internet connection is really bad. It, oh, I really don't have much control over that. It's up to Twitch whether or not I get quality options. I was thinking about um, doing that little trick that some other streamers do where at the beginning of the stream, they look at their own stream to see if they've gotten the quality options or not, and then just restart the stream. But uh, my concern, I guess, is that I might create a whole bunch of um, two-second long VODs that I have to go delete. Actually, I guess that wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, so sorry if uh, I don't have quality options. Um, what, I've, what I've done uh, on, the, on the other settings to try to mitigate that is I've lowered the FPS down to 20, and the bitrate is down to uh, 2 megabit. So it's not like I'm forcing, it's not like I'm setting a three or five megabit stream. It's, it should be around two megabits. So even though that's 1080p, uh, bitrate should be lower. Um, 
But yeah, I do apologize if you uh, want to have the quality option and Twitch didn't give it. it uh, it's not unless I was a partner where I would be able to manually set that. I'd have to do, like I said, that trick at the beginning of the stream. Start, restart my stream until I get the quality options. Um, and I'm just, I haven't, haven't started doing that yet. Sort, right? And then... Okay, so I can just do an A-B kind of a thing. And that is supposed to return... Okay, so we can return uh, A dot Z. Is a... Uh, which one do we want? Less than? I always get this backwards. Let's run it once and see. So... I think I actually have to re reinsert everything. Yeah, so after doing hold on. Actually no, I don't I don't want to I don't need to sort it there. I need to sort this sprites though. Oh, but that's a map. Hmm. Sprites to keep, right? This is too hard. <laughs> Maybe I do want to, um, Figure out how to use this pixie display. How do you install? Is it just npm install pixie layers? Pixie display? Okay. Let's try it. YOLO. PMI Pixie Display. All right, it's there. So... So we make a layer. Need to import it though. Or do I need to import it? Let's just see if I can use it. Yeah, instead of doing this thing, right? No, I wonder why they have, um, yeah. Let layer equals new pixie dot display dot layer. Let's see if we can get away with doing that. I did not. Okay, so I, I, I need to figure out how to get the uh, plugin loaded. Let's look at the example. Uh, loading. <laughs> loading. Uh, 
down. I don't want to download. I don't think this is working. It's not working. Okay, this other one did work. No, I was, that's this one. Uh, here we go. Yeah, but how do you... It's not showing me all of the things I need to see. I just feel so dumb. I don't, I, what I want to do is load that plugin. How do you load a plugin? Pixie.js, how to load a plugin. This is how to make a plugin. It's just, these links just sometimes just don't work. Pixie display is there. Maybe I just have to import it. I just don't know what to import it as. Do I just import Pixie display? I don't know. Not a constructor. This doesn't feel right. Yeah. Uh, can I do something like this and then do it down uh, in line 204? No. Is it that dot display? Undefined. Okay, I really don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> How to load pixie dot display. Import, maybe. Really just need to see someone's example code. Import pixie display. That's what I did. Not a constructor. That's what this guy is running into. This is again the V3 example. Yeah.
Wait a minute. Maybe it's the order. No, it really doesn't like that. I am lost. I don't know how this works. Maybe it's not layer. Uh, whoa. I've already closed the example I was using it too. Doesn't load sometimes. Crap, and I just closed it again. <laughs> uh. Error, oh no, it's the V3 one. Why did you choose a plugin over sorting it myself? Because uh, I was just struggling with how to uh, sort, how to, I'd have to create an array from an object and then sort it and then, uh, yeah. I was just getting frustrated, I think. Now I'm getting frustrated with this. <laughs> like it shouldn't be hard to, f someone should have shown how to do this with a complete example. But these aren't complete examples. They don't show the imports. Um, yeah, this is just, this is frustrating. Uh, maybe I need to specify it's gotta be in React. React Pixie JS Pixie Loader. Not Pixie Loader, uh, Pixie Display. That was just the very basic stuff. Oh, here we go. <sighs> Array sort container. Okay, so one problem, this looks like this is telling, they're suggesting to uh, sort it directly in the container, but I was looking at the documentation and the, con and the container children is, is read-only, right? Children, read-only. So I don't know why they're saying to do uh, container children. It's, an, it's a read-only. Or is it that the uh, the contents that we can't put in a different array, but we can change the order of the children? Okay, let me try that. So forget this display thing for us. Actually, I can just leave it, right? And then uh, remove that uh, who of four thing. We'll figure that out later, maybe. And instead, we will every time we uh, update this, we will ask the uh, this app stage children will sort that uh az uh less than bz right 
and then just store the sprite Z as is. And then that didn't work, so let me try greater than. Yeah, see, it's just not working. <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. Like, I don't know if this sorting is actually sorting it or not. Well, I could print it out. So console.log sprites this dot stage dot this dot app dot stage dot children the display order This, this, there's our Z, one. Oh, that's the wrong, so this probably should have been less than. See, so yeah, I don't even think it's sorting it. So it's, it's probably just the order in which they were created, yeah. So before, this is the order one, after, the order one. So it's, I don't think it's working. Hey there, multiple pixels, pixels. I'm getting frustrated because I don't know how to sort sprites in Pixie.js. Some, some forum suggested that you can simply sort the container's children. Actually, they're doing it slightly differently. They're subtracting them, which makes it maybe makes more sense. Maybe that's the problem I'm having. But, but yeah, I can't. I just can't get this to sort. I'm just being. I'm dumb or something. Oh, maybe that was it. <laughs> it was just my sorting function was wrong. I was using comparison. I'm used to using comparison because that's how you do it in uh, C++. But I guess they really do want min yeah minus. That makes sense. Minus positive or Negative, zero, or positive. All right, so. <sighs> Getting through that frustration. We don't need that pixie display. Although I'd like to figure out how to get that to work at some point. Uh, on Make that a subject for later, how to figure out how to get that to work. Instead of using, I was going to use, I was going to use pixie display to uh, make a display order. Or may, may, may make it so that it sorts it uh, automatically for me. But now we're just doing the uh, manual sorting, which I didn't think I could do. I was thrown off by the documentation saying it was read-only. It said children is read-only. So I'm like, oh, I guess I can't go in there and sort it, so how do I do that? But apparently, I guess read-only means I can't set that to some different array. But within the array, I can mutate it. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And I can... Repair the floor here, back to being um, ordinary looking. Export that to the floor. Repack the texture. And reload. There we go. Floor is a little bit uh, too bright. Let's uh, pick a different color. 
there is a way to do this in, in uh, a sprite and I don't know how to do it so I'm just doing it this way need to get good with this graphic stuff I think I got it yeah okay that's not so intrusive of a floor anymore You know how I can make the walls lo look a little bit better? Is to make them have a brick appearance. I don't know which one is which. Which one? I will just open relative. Yeah, let's... Um, bucket paint this color. Well, actually, let's just... Use a big brush. All right. And I can draw over that uh, little gap things, right? Okay, let's try to make them even, though. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Okay, that doesn't, doesn't add up quite right. Or five, one, two, three. Well, let's put a divider there. There, and then um, we'll offset that a little bit. Okay, and then just repeat the pattern a little bit more. Uh, I don't think I did, the sizes aren't, aren't going to add up. So, marquee tool to the rescue. Close enough, I guess. Actually, what if I do that? And then this can extend down to that floor. Only slightly offset. Let's see how that looks. So, save wall, export wall. Oops, I guess this is the wrong wall. <laughs> no, that's the correct one. How come it's not picking up the wall? Uh, add it back. Ah, how come it's not? It's putting it in the correct spot. What what the heck? I thought I fixed this problem more of it putting it in the wrong place. Yeah, there's the correct wall. Walk well, how come this one's not picking up from the correct place? Oh, it isn't picking up from the right place. There we go. Save, publish. All right. That took more. That took longer than it should have. Okay, I like my walls better. They look more brickish now. All right, uh, we'll proceed. Sorry for that uh, long um, distraction. We have walls, floors, health component. Okay. Uh, 
actually, I'm, I'm I'm wondering if really the same health component should be on monsters and generators because, well, may, uh, I think so. Just monsters will only have one one health. Yeah. So health component. Health. Hit point. How about just HP? Yeah. HP. And we'll pull it in from here. And all this rigmarole here. Healths. <laughs> this is mostly mechanical at this point. Yeah, this really should make templates or something. I need to think about it though. All this repetition is uh it's a sign that should that it should be uh made into a pattern of some kind. All right. So, we have Health. Let's give health to the player and to monsters. So, as far as a player is concerned, I think we should start out at a hundred. And far as far as the monster is concerned, I think it should be one. The the way it worked in Godless is every quarter you put into the machine gave you some amount of health, like a hundred or two hundred, depending on how the game was tweaked. And uh, health is going to drop slowly. Actually, yeah, how does this work? We want health to drop slowly for the player, so that they don't just stand still. Well, I guess we can just not do that mechanic. There's a mechanic in the uh, in the arcade game for Gauntlet where if you if you just sit still, your health sl sl slowly drops until you die. So that's so you can't hog the, the arcade machine. Um, and then you, every quarter you put in gives you another hundred health or whatever. But in in my demo game, I guess I just make it static. We just want some amount so that we can get hit a whole bunch of times and not die. And um, yeah, that'll work. So, okay, so now they have health. And we don't have generators yet. Displaying the health. Yes. I think I want the display of the health to be sort of special. So, it will be uh, its own system. Uh, we'll call it the. Uh, Look, should it just be called the part of the rendering system? I don't think so. Well, hold on. Maybe. Maybe part of the rendering system. So, yeah, if we made a part of the rendering system, what would I do? I would want to look for the player. So. That's. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not sure if I like this. The way the. The AI is looking for the player also is by getting the uh, the uh, in the uh, first input component. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I can do the same thing for now, though. So render would it's building up these sprites there. So here we will get the. Uh, Let's turn this around. So if we find an income comp component, we will find the player health by asking for the health component that matches that input. 
right? So then we can add the player's health. So uh, let's make let's make this object assembled outside here. Actually, let's assemble it even earlier up here. So this is const auto uh, message. It's just render, and then um, we'll add the sprites down here, I guess. And then there's just this becomes just send the message encoded. Like that. So, how come this do doesn't like that though? Oh, because it's const, not const. And this needs to be terminated correctly. There we go. Okay, so message health equals player health HP. All right. So this will this will get across the player's health. Now when I connect to the game, I should see uh, that coming across. Health one hundred, yay! So I need to just d draw that somewhere. Where to draw it? I guess I can keep it simple for now and just draw it on the bottom here. So that's in the front end. Uh, I'm in the wrong file. I was staring at that thinking this isn't the thing I want to be looking at. On server render, yes. So that updates the uh, sprites and we'll just have it update the state as well. So state health is message uh, dot health. And we'll make a uh, that part of our state health null. And we're going to print, I guess we'll display it down here. This is not going to be pretty, but that's fine. I want to make it larger. H2. There we go. So it's it's going to be down there for now. I think I eventually want like, well, I don't want to I don't need to make this prototype perfect really, but in a real game we would want to have the health like be shown somewhere uh, like in the real Gauntlet game, right? So that was uh shown off on the pane to the right. Right? Off to the right there. I think we'll just keep it like this for now. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're stuck. We can't move. Okay, what's next? Okay, here we go. If the monster reaches the player, destroy the monster and reduce the player's health. So... That's the AI system, right? All right. I'm still a little bit, little bit frazzled from the trouble I was getting to display things in the correct order. But I think I'm getting getting over it finally. Okay, so what was I doing here with positions info? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. We're we're looping through uh monsters, not positions. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so I think what we'll do is uh, a check before all this happens. We'll we'll see. Um, if uh, position x equals or plus mx equals player 
position x and position y plus m at n y. Actually, we it can't move in both directions, can it? Let's have it first decide which direction to move. Well, no, I can't do that. Um, yeah, this has to be a special check, right? I guess I can do it this way. Uh, gotta be, I gotta make it simple. Gotta keep it simple. But like this, and it equals. Hey there, BH Lithium. You have questions regarding C++ test frameworks. Okay, I got a video for you that I put onto YouTube. It's about half an hour long, and it's showing Google test, CMake, and VS Code. So not that you need all of those things like Google test and CMake, but it's a, it's showing an example uh, workspace where using test-driven development. Yeah, so check it out. A lot of people hate CMake, though, so I kind of hesitate to uh, recommend it. But it, it could it could work. It could work for you. This is gonna look ugly, but I don't really know a better way to do it right now. So if by moving towards the player on the X or the Y meets the player exactly, then uh, we're going to um, run into them and die. Otherwise, we're going to just move. So running into them and dying would be to reduce the player's health. So can I get away with something like this? Uh, getting the health component of the player. I'm probably doing this horribly wrong. And then we're getting using it using the uh, position, a player position. Where is that? Player positions entity ID. If it's not null, then apply it, right? Actually, uh, this is all one loop. So what, what I can do is I can have this continue when we're done, and then we don't need this else if stuff. If we fall into here, we're just going to try to move. Okay, so uh, we, can, we can, yeah. Before continuing, uh, we're going to, what are we going to do? Reduce the player's health. I forget how many uh, health points a ghost takes away, but let's just say it's 10. And this is player health. We also need to get our own health component because we're reducing our health to zero as well. Actually, let's do both. Monster health. If we both have health? No, if they have... Right. If we have health then we will reduce that as well. Okay, so that goes here. This, we'll just set it to zero. Suicide. Hey there. Enrocal Thrick. 
I'm hor saying your name horribly, but I apologize. Okay, so we if we if we run into the player, we reduce our own reduce that player's hit points by ten, and if we have health, we set it to zero. So I'm, I need a I need a system that will um remove well basically the delete entities that run out of health. Uh, I kind of don't want that to be part of. Well, I guess I could put put it put it in here as part of AI. It just the problem is it's already looping through those monsters right now, so I guess what we can do is we can make a list a, a set for now. Int, right? Monsters um Monsters killed. Set is not in our vocabulary yet. Now it is. All right, so we're going to... Monsters killed. Uh, insert uh, monster entity ID. So we're collecting them, and then when we get out of this uh, loop, and then we're going to... Uh, ask the components to uh, destroy that entity. So, or a con const auto entity ID in uh, monsters killed components dot uh, we have create component of type get entity right, so it's going to be uh, remove entity. I have no idea if this is the right way to do it, but I'm going to find out. Your C++ noob, any tips dealing with double linked list? Uh, tried, my biggest tip would be try to use one from the standard library. So double linked list would be either l standard list or a standard double ended queue, uh, DQ. Those are really nice containers that have the standard methods like push to the front, push to the back, insert, uh, you can index them, all the things that you um, would, would, would require. If they support sorting, all, all sorts of things. I would not recommend trying to make your own double link list unless you're in school and you're learning data structures and, and then it's really not so much the C++ thing, it's more, they probably... Probably the best thing would be to just use raw pointers and you do it in C. Yeah, so it kind of depends on what you, what you need and why. Remove entity, you need to make this here. We have create entity, so it kind of is a nice balance to have remove entity. Or should it be destroy? It should be destroy to uh, line up with create. There we go. So next to create entity, we'll have a destroy entity. So destroy is more difficult than create, oddly enough. Uh, that goes there, and one fewer void. Okay. So for destroy, we can't just... Um, well, create was easy. We just made a new... We just reserved a new ID. So destroy, we basically need to go all through all our lists and remove remove any entity, any components that refer to that entity. So it's a little bit more work, isn't it? So... Or, oh, you're in school learning data structures? So, in general, when you're learning data structures like double linked list, it's, you need to really uh, keep track of what are the elements of the structure. So, a double linked list has three elements, right? The node itself, the previous pointer, and then the next pointer. So, just keep those those three in mind. Any kind of operation will usually... You have to ask yourself: Does it involve? It? Does it involve the previous pointer? Does it involve the next pointer? Does it involve the node? Right. So, all of the insert and remove will generally involve all three, right? But uh, iterating through might only use two of them, right? The uh, next, you might start from the beginning and just use the next pointer, right? So once you get those that down, like thinking of the the elements of the data structure and like 
which ones are involved in every operation and what do you have to do with each of them, then it, it becomes a lot easier to deal with. And especially stuff like uh, double link lists are easy if you can visualize it by drawing it on paper, like a box to represent each node, arrows to represent each pointer, and uh, you just... Um, an operation like insert, if you break it into the steps and you do it on paper, it's it's pretty straightforward, which is why they teach that in, in school for uh, data structures, because it's easy to visualize and to draw out. So yeah, uh, when you're first learning, like inserting or removing something from a double link list, you want to break it up into steps and, and draw it out. Why do I use standard? That's it's just I prefer to do that rather than... Um, at the top, I could do using namespace... STD, and then I'd be able to remove that. But then um, I like having STD there because it's only three, three plus two characters long, right? And it reminds me that that object comes from the standard library. That's really the only reason. So there's nothing wrong with using namespace STD. It's just a preference. Okay, so for yeah, I wanted to I wanted to make this iterate through and remove elements, right? So auto Collider entry equals colliders begin. Collider entry not equal to colliders end. Actually, uh, so I'm going to do it this way. While. While it's not equal to the end, we'll say if colliders... Uh, Collider, that should be S. Colliders, it's the entry into the colliders. Uh, second dot, okay, it's not helping me. Why not? Error type. Oh, because that should be impl in front. Yeah. Now it'll help me, right? No? Okay, it's just entity, all right, because it's a vector, okay, um, if that's equal to the entity ID, then we're going to remove it from the list. So the way you do that is colliders.erase, and then you reassign when you're done the colliders entry. Otherwise, we just advance the iterator. So that removes it from colliders. I need to do the same thing for the other five lists. Actually, this is it, it gets more and more. Again, so I'm making more boilerplate that the uh, component manager has to deal with. <clears throat> That's okay. So collider, leverage search replace here, right? So next is input. And then we have monsters. And then we have positions and finally tiles. I'm sort of doing the manual version of what I should be doing, which is templates or macros or something. All right, that's... So it's basically pretty expensive to uh, destroy a, an entity because you have to re remove all of its components, and the components are spread out across all these different uh, vectors. So, you know... Depending on how frequently you destroy entities, it might make sense to, instead of destroying them, maybe move them to a graveyard or uh, use different data structures to hold on to components. All right. This should actually work now. When the ghosts get to me, they should damage me and disappear. Of course, it's not going to be very dramatic because I don't have any uh, particle effects. But that's okay. You guys can use your imagination, right? <laughs> Let's try it out. Connect. Okay, when they get to me, they're going to disappear. Oof. And now I'm down to 80 health. All right, let's see if I can av avoid getting hit. No, I got hit. All right. I gotta be quick on the controls. Oh, that guy got me. He escaped this guy. Okay, I successfully escaped him. He gets too close to me though. Boof, I lose health. All right, we're getting there. 
Maybe I should do the generator next because that's more fun. I was thinking about doing pickups and weapons first, but maybe generators would be more fun. Let's do generators next. Yeah. So the generators and the generator system, let's do those next. Uh, you don't want to hear me cough. It's not a good thing. <laughs> I'm almost out of cough drops, too. I should probably just go to the store. Actually, I should probably go to the store right after this stream. All right, uh, let's add, let's check that in, actually. I forget to do this a lot. Check in my work before I do the next thing. Uh, back in, let's check in back in first. All right, so I added health components and... Uh, Z component for tiles. I did, I did, did a bunch of th things, didn't I? Let's try to break this up into the different pieces. So we'll add the Z, the Z order stuff first. There's the Z order. So add Z order to tiles. Did I add health next or did I add walls? I think I added walls next. Let's let's do the walls and floors. Add walls and floors. Right? This didn't change at all for walls and floors. This didn't either. Okay, so add walls and floor. And this is adding health. So not this one. So that, and that, but not that. That, that, and that, and that, but not that. Add a health. And then finally we have, uh, let's add this first. So add uh, destroy entity, front two components. And this one is uh, logic to uh, AI. Damage player and uh, and, uh, dis and and di disappear. Have monsters. Damage player and disappear uh, when they reach the player. All right. And this is the front end, right? Okay, this I didn't want to see. That. So could I have just fix that up? Why is it doing that anyway? I think I may need to reload the uh, texture packer. So let me uh, let me just do this open project again. It's putting the path in there for, for some weird reason. Is it because the path is added? Let me just... It's wall? No, it's floor. Let's remove the floor and add it back. Oh, the floor isn't in the right directory. Well, that maybe that explains it. Um, shoot. I put the floor in the wrong place. <laughs> in the old location, I think. Yes, that's the floor. Okay, I'm, let's just not use this folder. Let's go to a sprite and fix it there. This floor, so save that as into the correct directory this time. That is the correct directory. 
Save the floor. It says it exists, but I didn't see it. Oh, it's not putting it in the right place. I think it's this it's uh, this path it's writing to. Yeah, so that that path is wrong. All right. So save that. Uh disable, save, publish. There we go. Adding the floor and the wall. show up with no differences again. Um, let's just control J those. Mm. This didn't really work out, did it? So let me stage that, but then remove that. Control J that. Figure that pixie display thing later. So we're displaying the health and the Z order of things, right? Let's just let's just let's just check this all in together. Add floor, wall, add floor and wall. Add Z order. Add health. That's a horrible commit, but shh, pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> All right, generators. So we need to make, uh, let's make the generator artwork first. Oh, what happened here? That didn't get pushed? Huh. Guess I forgot to push that. Okay. So let's save that as generator. Actually, let's um, let's change the name of that to uh, Bones, and we'll erase everything. All right, so Bones, Dem Bones. Let's draw Dem Bones. All right. That's a bone-like thing, isn't it? And then let's put a skull up here. And then another bone right here. Doesn't look too horrible, does it? Doesn't look too horrible. I like it. Let's save that. Export. Bones. And... Bring over to... Oh, did I close? No, it's over here. Add sprites, add them bones to it, and disable pro features. Save, publish. We got bones. Them bones. All right. So. I'm going to add a generator. Generator is a collider. It has health. It is not a monster. 
It has a position in a tile. The tile is bones. And it has, let's say it has, um, I, I want the, hmm. Depends on how many times I want uh, the hero to hit it before it gets killed. Well, if the hero does one damage each time, let's say it takes 10 hits. 99, 9, 9 99? <laughs> have, it, have it basically almost indestructible? Okay, let's add a generator somewhere. So, add generator let's put it off to the right side so eight or eight uh four let's say so it won't actually do anything yet because i don't have a generator but let's see it on the map oh i need to to um update the front end don't i uh front end has to load the uh, glyph Right here, bones. There we go. And cannot read bones. Um, why not? Oh, I misspelled it. <laughs> I d I didn't realize I saw uh, that that happened. Okay, let's remove bones. Probably when I export it from a sprite, right? I probably misspelled it. Yep. A little L there. I didn't see it. Add them bones again. Now I can reload, right? Okay, we got them bones. And there's the uh, generator there. The idea is we want this to constantly spawn new ghosts, like uh, in random directions around it every once in a while, okay? So first I need to mark that it's a generator uh, by get making a generator component. Generator. And we could put something in here now, like a uh, frequency or health, something like that. Oh no, health? No, right? Health has got its own component, but um, Frequency, I guess, could be a, a thing. Or um, chance. How about we make it a chance thing? Spawn chance. And the default, let's say, is 10% uh, um, of the time. All right. And it reminds me, if we're going to have a random, num random number generator, I need to make one and seed it. Uh, okay, so let's... Let me think about this. I guess I, could, I guess these the generator system could own that, right? Okay. Anyway, the uh, component we have to add here. And in all the places I need to uh, duplicate again. So we have generators now. G comes before H. <laughs> Trying to keep it in alphabetical order. I don't know why. All right. Yeah, so one, again, every time I look at this code, I think to myself, one of my takeaways should be when I design this outside the prototype to avoid all this duplication somehow. All right. What didn't build? I okay. Generators is not a member. That is correct. It's not generators. It's generators. 
Okay, so we have the component. Uh, let's add, make the component actually, make the entity have the component. And then we can set the frequency. We set the frequency if we want, or the spawn chance. I'll just set it to the same thing. And don't know why it has a squiggly under health. Oh, but it do, it does build. Okay, so system, right? Need the generator system. Systems, systems, here we go. So we'll take AI and duplicate it. So this is generator, generation, a generation system. This is all boilerplate, and then this one is not. A lot of it is okay, but then the, okay. The update here will be we'll go, we're going through all things of type generator, right? So instead of colliders, generators. Okay. All right, so we don't need, need monsters. We don't need this tick. Okay, going through all the generators. Uh, yeah, generator will have a position. If it doesn't have a position, we can't use it. So, the rest of this logic is monster generation. All right. I already know I'm going to want to call add monster. So, add monster is in game right now. I guess we'll move it. Let's move it. Actually, you don't have to, we don't have to move it. We'll just um, have our own copy of it. Right? We can just do it that here. We just need components. Okay. Let's add some state here. I want a random number generator. So, um, forget I forget exactly what it is. Is it? Uh, look this up in my little handy dandy C plus plus manual. It's Mersine Twister or something. Mersine Twister engine. Yes, MT19937 from random. Okay, and then we put one here. RNG, right? And then what we can do in the constructor, we can uh, seed that RNG. So, ampl rng dot seed and uh, what do we what can we what do we seed it with any value I guess right what's this result type I guess I can just take an int, right? So let's seed it with the current time. So that's just easy enough. Time null. That's from time.h. All right, now that we have, hopefully I did this right. Yeah. And that returns a time t. Let's cast it to an int. And we have a seeded random, random number generator, generator. We can use it down here. So if Let's say roll, const, uh, auto roll, standard uniform 
real distribution. Uh, the default is double. Uh, between min max, right? Um, this shows how to do it, right? Uniform real distribution. It makes a new distribution. Okay, yeah, this is better. Let's look and see how this works. Okay, you make one and then use it with the generator. So making one is zero to zero to one, and then passing in the generator. RNG. So that gives us a random number from 0 to 1 if I did this right. I guess, do I have to say double? Or is it just uh, that? Yeah, that works. Okay. Let me make sure I can compile it still, right? Oh, uh, we haven't added generation to the build system yet. And I haven't added a bunch of stuff, right? I forgot to add health. Generator. Health. Input monster. There's no monster. Position test. See, the headers are, are optional to give to the build system. So it was okay that I was missing them before. But systems is not okay. We have to at least have the CPP file. Generation HPP, okay. Build. What is this? What is it telling me? Requires a template argument. Okay, fine. You are a double. There we go. Have fun. Okay, there we go. So our role is between 0 and 1. So we'll just say if role is less than generator dot spawn chance inclusive no exclusive then we're gonna make a um we're gonna make a a monster i guess then we decide what we decide is what where to put it so in one of the four cardinal directions right so again uh roll let's roll again only it's st standard uniform int distribution uh, sure int between 0 and 3 okay and then we'll say switch the role actually we can just do switch on this directly it can only be one of three things right 0 1 2 0 1 2 or 3 wowee look who's here hey, it's Raimi Is Adam done? Adam's usually finishing around now, right? And gonna do um, marketing stuff with his latest schedule. Okay, so really this is the default, right? We don't, we don't expect any other numbers to go through there. So what I really want is to get a, delta x and delta y, right? And this will be uh, a dx equals minus 1, dx equals 1, dy is minus 1, dy equals 1. Actually, there's an easier way to do this, isn't there? I can do a little bit cleverly. I can say int d equals that. Actually, we, can, we can just do that, right? And I can say dx is d divided by 2, and that's d mod 2. Right? Isn't that clever? Only we have to add 1. So actually, I can just do that in, in the RNG, right? Between 1 and 4. Did I do that right? No. It's... 
No, I'm not doing this right at all. Uh, it's that. It's two times that. So it's two times that minus one. That'll work. D is just a direction. So direction zero, one, two, and three. So I want minus one, zero, one, zero. I mean, I, I want, um, this isn't right. This still isn't right then, is it? Shoot. I thought I could do this smartly. <laughs> I want to get the numbers minus one, zero, plus one, zero, Z zero, minus one, and zero plus one out from zero to three. So how would I do that? I guess I really just want a minus one plus one and I want to know which one it is. So. No, I don't have unit tests. <laughs> yeah, D is the direction that we're spawning the monster in. Uh, the mod works, but it's which one we assign it to. So maybe I can't do it as smartly as I thought. We'll say if D divide by 2 equals 0 else and then here it's uh, dx is uh, this otherwise dy is that how about that probably the closest I can do without being more smart let's see if it works you don't think D is readable at all? It's a standard in, in, in integer distribution from 0 to 3, inclusive, using a, re, using a random, random number generator. In, in that, isn't that obvious? <laughs> so we're going to uh, call add monster. If, uh, if it's not, um, if not uh, components is obstacle in the way, So that is a. Uh, let's have this one be um, just X and Y. And then we'll, s we'll add. And then we'll start it off to be the generator's position. So then we can say X and Y. If there's no obstacle in the way, add one. There. All right. Let's see if it worked. It might not work, and then playing with scissors can say, told you so. Let's see. Connect. Don't get... Uh, oh, we lost health. Oh, uh, generator system isn't online yet. We need to connect it in. Right, I didn't actually have it in the systems. Uh, systems. Where do we want to do it? Probably after the player moves and after the AI moves, but before we render, right? Generation. Do do generation. There. Okay. Let's try it again. This might be this might be uh, fun and might not work at all. Let's see. Actually, I would have expected it to generate something by now. Oh, there it goes. Little guy popped out. Uh oh, I'm in trouble now. I have no way to fight back right now. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's not. It's just not generating him fast enough. I think in the real Gauntlet game, um, basically the level starts out pretty flooded, and so the generators are kind of at this rate. You're supposed to shoot them before they generate more ghosts to uh, harm you. 
Ow. 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 Ooh, look, I'm at negative health. I shouldn't be able to run into that generator, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to continually lose health if I stand here, aren't I? So I could play with that, right? I can make it even more fun by uh, changing one number, right? Where's the magic number? It's right here. What if I make it 100% chance to spawn a ghost every uh, single turn? This will be interesting. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> yeah, I rapidly die. Oof. Can I hide from them? I don't I don't try I don't run nearly fast enough to avoid them being overwhelmed by them. That's pretty funny. Okay, obviously we don't want that many ghosts, so leave it the way it is. All right, well the generator works. I need to be able to to uh, kill it though. Um So we added bones here, right? Erg. Not that one. That one was a mistake. And oh, what happened to the that was an old that was a mistake as well, right? All right, so these got added. Add bones. And then I'll clean off the rest of the files with this command. There we go. So back end. Add gener like let's add these separately. Uh, those I just forgot to add before. Add missing headers. Okay. Add generator component and generation system. Okay, now I think it's time for us to fight back. <laughs> Don't you think? Right now we're just taking a hit every time. Um... Yeah, let's add, let's do pickups later, if I have time. I'm actually kind of running low on time, believe it or not. I only have like an hour left. So let's, yeah, let me do pickups after I do weapons and weapon firing. Yeah, all right, so we're going to add weapons. I think I'm just going to um, make a spinning axe. So let's make an axe. And we'll have to add, we'll, make, we'll make, have to make four different tiles by making a master tile and then rotating it three times. So let's save this one as axe zero. And let's clear the things. All right, let's make the axe. Um, That look good? I suppose we can have a little uh, handle to it. That's not going to show up very well. How about a golden handle? Eh, still not good. Green handle? Actually, you know, it will show up a little bit better. Well, let's see. Let's see what the brown handle shows up as. And, uh... Let's add a little bit of definition to this. The background right here is making it hard to see, but I think this should look good. If it doesn't, we'll fix it later. Let's, so let's export that as X zero ping. Pull it into the uh, tile sheet here.
Actually, let's just do all four. Let's make placements for all four. So, save as... one, and then we'll rotate this thing. There we go. Save. Export that as X1. And then save as X2. Rotate again. It's not an axe, it's a verdiche. I guess so. Close enough, right? All right, so let's rotate one more time. Save, export. Do all the art first, right? Okay, so pulling it in here. Add sprites one, two, and three. There we go. Publish. Save. Okay. Pull it into the um, front end here. Yeah, getting ugly, but that's okay. Just a prototype. I have to keep telling myself that. Just a prototype. Let's um, let's just add a weapon randomly in the game that just sits there for, for first. So we will have a new component called weapon. Weapon, and mm, we don't need any data yet. And you know the drill by now, right? Got to add it to the component manager. And then add it to all of the places here. Uh, why is it not? There we go. It's fighting me. Trying to do this quickly, it's very uh, brainless. All right. Okay, we're done. No, one more, one more block of boilerplate. All right, so build it. Make sure it's not running. Okay, build it. Miss your standing shelf. I'm, yeah, I need a I need a standing shelf, standing desk. Hmm. Okay, let's put one in the game somewhere. So. We'll add a, ran, ran, a randomly placed weapon, just so I can see it. And um, the way I want to do this is the rendering system is going to rotate it. So it's going to be always spinning. So it will have... Actually, no, it won't. I know, we'll have a weapon system that will rotate it. So we'll just it'll be sitting on the floor right now, axe. So it is a weapon. It has a position and a tile, and that is it, right? Okay, let's add one. Impl. Add weapon. Uh, I don't know. Where did we add the wall? Let's add it behind the wall. So 6-6. Six, six. You muted me? Ah! <laughs> I just said that I wish I had a standing shelf. Okay. Run it and play the game. Where's my axe? There's my axe, it's sitting there on the floor. Or is it, what do you call it, a bardiche? Oh, I forgot to set it Z level. 
It's sitting there uh, on the floor level. So above the floor, please. And ghosts are spawning and killing me in the meantime. Uh, build. Connect. I still feel like it's be the wind. The floor is being drawn over it, but I think it's okay. I see a dark pixel there that shouldn't be there. What if I put the? I guess it's okay. I guess I can look in here and see. I should see it where. In the network, right? These sprites. X. Z is one. Okay, well, it should be drawing on top of the floor. Check the image. Uh, let's open zero. Yeah, that pixel there is showing up darker for some reason. Eh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. How do I make it more X-like? Remove that pixel there. Yeah, that actually looks better. and one okay I already had one one is open twice three zero one two three okay three needed to remove all the pixel so then I can just that should pick it up automatically and I just publish it and we're good right Reload that. Okay, that looks more like an axe to me. And actually, that uh, pixel problem went away. Maybe, maybe I just needed to reload or something. Yeah, Adam Art. These are uh, prototype game graphics, uh, Raimu Art. But I think I did a pretty good job with that pile of bones there, don't you think? My pile of bones is pretty good. My ghost isn't too bad either. Uh oh, I'm about to die. Look, good thing there's no death system yet. I don't, I don't actually die. I just go into a negative health. All right, so uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want the axe to spin. That's the next thing I want to do. I'll make that part of the weapon system. So, which I don't have yet. Let's make a weapon system. I can ch take any of these that I want. How about player movement? And we'll rename it weapon. Weapons. Why not? Okay. So what will the weapon system be doing? It's going to be looking at components of type or weapons. Weapons all have a position, and that's about it, right? So, actually, let's put something into the weapon component called phase. That'll make it easier for me. So, int phase. And uh, then I can say in the weapon system here, uh, weapon dot phase uh, equals weapon dot phase plus one mod four right 
And it's not constant anymore. We're modifying it. All right. And so switch weapon. Well, actually, we can just build it, right? Um, use my handy dandy uh, string formatter. And we'll also want to get the uh, tile. If we can't get either the position or the tile, we're going to skip it. All right, so update the phase, the tile uh, name equals, using my little helper thing here, it's like a C++ version of S printf. It is a X and then a decimal weapon dot phase. Okay, I want to kind of spin more quickly, so I think I'm going to increase the tick rate of the game. And uh, that is down here. So let's make it 100 milliseconds. And um, the weapons will um, basically spin every tick. And I need to slow down the AI and the um, players, right? So it was every 2 times 250. So that would make it 5, right? And then a player, I want to... I want the player to, to move like every other time. So that's the input system. Player movement. Every other one. And then I have to, I, have to make, I accelerated the game, so I need to make sure that the spawn rate is taken into account. So that is the spawn chance. So let's make the chance a little bit less, like half as much. Let's try this out. Yeah, there's no equals, equals, equals in C++. None of that. Oh, look, the game's been going, and I'm at health minus 900. <laughs> okay, I forgot about that. I left the game running. Ghosts are hurting me. I don't have sound effects, so I don't know this. Uh, why is it minus one? That's weird. Eh, anyway, it won it worked. Okay, let's try it. My weapon's not spinning, though. I think I messed it up. They're, they're moving too quickly. Moving way too quickly, and my weapon isn't spinning at all. What did I do? The AI system... Oh, okay, it's not equal to zero. Yeah, I had it backwards. This should also be not equal. And that means the, um, yeah, that's what it was. But the weapons, oh, I didn't add the, uh, I did this last time. I added a system and I didn't add it in here. Where do we want weapons to update in? Does it really matter which step it updates in? We can have it done last. Actually, let's do it first. That way, um, I, what I don't want to happen is for the player to to um create a new, a new axe in the in the in the air and have it move right away. So let's have the weapons move uh, here first. There we go. Yeah, I need to make come up with some sound effects, don't I? Okay, we're not even building weapons. Yeah, I forgot about that. We need to include the weapon system. All right. Yeah, for sound effects, it's a little bit of a more trickier thing. Like, I could get some free sound effects, but I have to be uh, pretty careful because I'm checking this into GitHub and making it public, so I don't want to use something that will be, like, against copyright law or something like that. Why is it not like... Oh, because it says input. Weapon. Oh, thanks for the bits. Endless soccer. The cake is a lie, yes. Good thing I don't have any cake in my game. I only have spinning axes, ghosts, and bones. 
Yeah, I, I've been thinking about making the, my own sounds because it's actually a, a pretty uh, fun thing. You just come up with like random materials and you basically drop them on the floor and record it. And then you take those sounds and you put them into a digital audio workstation and then have fun tweaking the pitch, speed, and then combining things, putting filters on things. It sounds like a fun thing, but I need to go, you know, capture raw sound and do it. I'll probably do that for my real game. Like for basic sounds like, you know, weapon striking. I'll probably take a piece of metal and drop it on the floor and record that. You can't stay? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, thanks for showing up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the 10-bit the cake. And shoot, my weapon still ain't spinning. I want to see it spin. What is up with my weapon not spinning? Why do you specify each CVP, HTTP file in the... Oh, because uh, CMake doesn't know... If I were to use a glob here, um, CMake, if I ran CMake, it would collect all the files, but it wouldn't know that any files are added or removed after I've run CMake, so it won't know to run CMake again. It's sort of a limitation of CMake and how it's run. Um, yeah, so that it's a lame reason, but that's the reason. I kind of prefer listing out the files anyway, because then um, I've, I've seen some projects have extra files that aren't supposed to be built. And they just don't list them. Um, yeah, why is my weapon system not spinning? So let's see what it might be. Did I give... I gave him positions and tiles, right? I guess it's possible the weapon system might not be running. It should be if I put it in there. Although I wonder why it uh, says it's undefined. Don't know. Weapon, tile, uh, weapon position and tile, right? Weapon position and tile. Yeah, what's the deal? Oh, wait a minute. I think I might know why. Uh, yeah, it's because we're not checking that in the front end to see if the glyph changed. Yeah, so it is spinning. It's just not we're draw we're not drawing it being spun. Okay, I think I have an idea. Well, hold on. Can we ask Pixie what texture a sprite is using? It's basically if it finds it in there, right? Uh, it's this the positive thing that we haven't written yet. If the sprite is in the list, but it's a uh, tile, if it's texture changes, I guess, we, can we just always reload the texture? Let's see. Time to do, start doing the shaders, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really, it's... Um, Okay, it's given to the constructor. How do I change it? That's a good question. In Pixie.js, how do you change the sprite? Uh, is that... That'd be under sprite? Sprite, sprite, sprite. I wonder if I'm going to have to use something like animated sprite. I guess I can reassign it. I wonder how expensive that is. Can I just always reassign it? I can see what that does. Uh, so if we find the sprite, then sprite uh, dot texture equals uh, what? This texture is texture. Sprite data dot texture. Who can do that? Let's see. Oh, game isn't running. Run the game. There we go. 
We have a spinning axe. It's spinning. <laughs> I want to do a little bit. I have to do a little bit more than spinning, though. So what I wanted to do is uh, move in a certain direction, and when it strikes something, go away. And if the thing it struck a, as a, it has a health component, reduce the health. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna do all these things. The uh, texture is a handle to something that does hold the pixel data, yeah. Yep, spinning X. Watch what happens when I run into it. Absolutely nothing. I'm already dead. Ow, it's hitting me. Actually, we kind of wanted to show on top of everything, right? So I should have a Z order of even higher than one. Two. All right, so. Already dead. Also already dead, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's give weapon a direction that it moves in. Uh, just keep it simple, right? And then we'll have weapon move every phase, so... So let's test this. So the uh, weapon we added in the very beginning of the game... Let's have it travel to the right. You know what? It's, I'm going to have a problem, too, because my stage doesn't have walls around it. Maybe I should fix that right now. And put walls, so we'll have those walls because those are like those are my those are like my test my interior test walls. But also, if it's any of the boundaries conditions, right? If it's zero, if it's ten, if y is zero or y is eight, we'll make a wall. Let's test that real quick. There we go. Oh, I'm in a wall. I'm kind of feeling also uh, that I should uh, reduce the scale a little bit. Okay, a couple things, right? I don't want to start in the wall, so... Let's put me there, and um, yeah, everything else should be fine, and... Let's reduce the scale of things and increase the size. So let's d let's let's go from four to three. So that would be um, thirty percent more. And just a rough guess would be we can go to twelve and fourteen. And the. Uh, Uh, let's see if I get this right. Let's build that. This is still running. Stop the game. Then I can build it. And then uh, before I... Well, I can start it now. But before I play it, I need to reduce the um, scale. So right now it's hard-coded, which is bad. Uh, is it easy to load and save levels right now? No. And am I set on using tile-based levels? For my game, uh, for a real game, sort of. But um, that might just be to start with, and I could expand it. I was also thinking of making hex-based coordinate systems. And uh, whether to make it discrete or continuous, I was going to start discrete because it's easier. All right, so that's one part of the scale. The other one was we had this here. So that's... It's 16 pixels wide times 3. Let's reduce this down to 16 times 3 instead of 4. Let's see what that looks like. Connect. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger. I didn't screw it up. That's good. Oh. It's noticeably slower. Oh, and I've reached... Oh, the player movement has um, got an artificial constraint in it. Let's remove that constraint. That is the player 
movement system. It's a, it has a constraint in here, right? Yeah, this thing. So we don't need that anymore. It's really just, is, the op is there an obstacle in the way? Now that we have walls all around, I just, before I didn't want things flying out of the arena. Now we have walls to keep that from happening. Connect. All right, now let's test. Oh, I can't move at all. <laughs> I, can, I can move to the right. I can move to the left as long as there's no ghost in the way. But I can't move down. Okay, what's, what did I do here? Oh, that should be a knot. That would be important, wouldn't it? Yay, I can move again. Cool. Okay, let's make axes fly. Maybe the world could be tiles, but not the players? Hmm. Interesting idea. Okay, the weapon system. So in, in addition to uh, rotating, we will have it move. So you know what I'd really like to have as a convenience function is uh, get collider at. So if I had something like, uh, let's see, const auto x equals uh, position x plus weapon dot dx, and then the same thing for y, right? And then we can say, uh, cost auto, well, auto, we might change it, right? Auto, no, we won't. Collider equals components get, uh, let's see, yeah, get collider at. X, Y. Okay, let's just make that as a convenience function. So, sort of like is obstacle in the way, only it actually returns. Actually, couldn't I just turn is obstacle in the way to make it return a pointer? Yeah, that makes more sense to me. So this would return a collider. Actually, let's keep, look, we'll keep it separate for now. World is tiles because these are ray trace, but entities are continuous. I'll think about it. This is new to you. How does C++ work in the browser? It doesn't. So I have two parts, a front end and a back end. The front end is JavaScript, and it's talking to the back end through a WebSocket. So here's the traffic that goes through the WebSocket. So um, every time the screen updates, there's a new um, render message. And it's basically, it's, it's pretty uh, inefficient. It's basically re-rendering everything. We could be more efficient in only rendering, only saying what changed. For right now, we're doing everything. And then in the reverse direction, if I do a movement key, like I press K or I release K, press it again, a message goes to the back end in the other direction. Um, so the back end is in C++, where the front end is in, in the browser in JavaScript. And the only reason I'm doing it this way is, is this is this quick prototype yesterday and today is to test the entity c component system in um, outside of my actual game. So I basically l learn my mistakes outside the game in some kind of side project here prototype. And then once I learn, you know, enough that I'm comfortable with this, then I then I'll do the same thing in the real game. The real game is sort of has the same architecture. It's got a front end. Uh, in the browser and a back end on the server side because it's a multiplayer. Have you looked at Rust? I haven't looked at Rust, but a lot of people on Twitch like it. 
And what do you think of it as a C++ dev? Yeah, sorry, I don't know enough about it to have an, uh, a good opinion. Can you disable systems without breaking others? Yes, that's the whole point. I should be able to... In fact, I've been doing that by mistake, by just not adding them in, right? I was wondering why my, why my axe wasn't spinning. It was because the weapon system wasn't enabled. So, yeah, that's the whole point, is we can easily uh, change what systems are enabled, you know, which ones are, are run, and which ones aren't. And um, same thing with components, right? Yeah, so let's make... This is really the same as is, is obstacle, only it returns the collider. Uh, but let's keep it separate for now. So it's the same, but with returning... Hold on. That needs to go there. It's the same, only it's going to return the collider instead of... Uh, it's going to return colliders... Uh, the address of it. Actually, what is in colliders? Right, so it, we do need to return the address of it. And then here it's return null pointer. Okay, so back in the weapon system, if there is something there, actually we can just say if, if there's not, eh, if there is, then what do we want to do? We want to hit it, right? It's never going to hit another player. Well, no, it might hit a player. I think what we want to do is we want to uh, get the health component and reduce it, right? Makes me think um, there's going to be now two places where health is reduced, so I might want to have another system for that, for reducing health. Or just have a system that responds to health when it gets negative. All right, so health. health, right? If there's no health component, then, uh, actually, if it, let's just do it if it is. But basically, if we collide, we're going to destroy the weapon. So, like we had with the AI, we're going to have to have a set of weapons destroyed. All right, and then uh, add it to the set if we collide. So this is weapons destroyed, and this is weapons entity ID, and then the same kind of a thing at the end where we destroy we destroy the weapons. That we can't do it in the loop because we're looping over an array that we're, we're it, this will modify the array, so we have to be careful. There you go. So we'll destroy the weapon. So when it hits something, it'll be destroyed. If what it hit was uh, had a health component, then we're going to reduce it, right? So the amount we reduce it, I think, will just be um, one right now. All monsters will have one hit point. Generators have ten, so we'll have to hit a generator ten times to kill it. So this will work. This now when I run this, the axe is going to go flying off to the right. The test axe that I made, right? Then I have to make a system for um, generating new weapons based off of what fire keys I have down. Let's see the axe fly. It's not flying. I'm bummed. Oh wait a minute! I I didn't actually have it fly, did I? If I run into it though, I'm going to lose health. Watch this. Yeah, so, actually, yeah, it looks like a, a, a uh, ghost ran into it and got killed by it. Okay, let's see um, this again. I think I, what I did is I, I computed, the, computed it, but if it, doesn't, if, right, if it doesn't collide, we want it to actually fly. Fly would be the position x equals x, position y equals y, right? That's the part I forgot. All right, it's going to fly and hit the wall now. I have a feeling. Let's see. There it goes. Oh, it hit the wall. So we could add more things, like if also when the ghost runs into me, we could have a, a uh, one frame long entity that, or if, you know, particle or whatever you want to call it, uh, whenever something gets struck. So that's maybe icing on the cake. 
Don't know how, how far I want to take this, though. I, I do want to be able to fight those ghosts and win, though. Well, I had the fire key in there. It's just nothing uses the fire key. But I want to be, like, as I'm running through here, I want to be, like, firing axes at these ghosts and killing them. So let's do that next, uh, after I check in. So we added the weapon system. Add uh, weapons. On the front end, we added the axe, right? Yes. There's the axe. In all four of its phases. And then we, uh, that's, that was to um, allow its sprite textures to change. And, and we also reduced it by four. So add axe, allow texture updates, and reduce tile size. All right. Okay, so let's make axes. That I think I wanted to have a player firing system to do that. How often should we be able to throw an axe? Maybe um, twice as fast as we can move? So this is a new system, right? Uh, player firing. All right, let's spell it right. Firing. Player firing. Actually, um, I should have copied what was in player movement. Let me just copy paste that into here. All right, so player firing. Before I forget, let's add it here. And... Uh, doesn't really matter. One of these systems we will move. Actually, let's do flare firing first. It doesn't really matter. We don't want to move if we're firing. And we always want to fire if we have the fire key down. So there's. I'll be updating this player movement thing to prevent us from um, firing while moving. Because that's how the real game works. And the uh, firing uh, we will do now. All right, so firing. Player. Firing. Okay, so the, the logic that was similar. Okay, let's only allow... Okay, actually, I guess it would be every tick, right? Yeah, let's do every, every, every tick we can fire. So the fire keys are A and D and... Uh, W and S. And we don't care about obstacles being in the way, do we? Actually, maybe I do. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's compute this separately. I think if the obstacle is in the way, we'll just directly do damage to them. Let's just keep it simple for now. So int dx int dy, and so this one is um, dx equals uh, minus one, uh, dy, uh, dx equals uh, one. So it's extremely simple, right? Can I give you a link to where the idea of the game is explained? Yeah, that's in t t today. Actually, uh, it's one up from that, so that should link here. Actually, no. I forgot to update the today command. Yeah, that links directly to here, where um, I have the idea explained here. Um, and the inspiration was the original Gauntlet video game. I forgot to update the today, today command. It should go to one page more, which is just to add the stuff I forgot that I didn't get to. I, I was hoping to do this whole thing in four hours, but of course, you know, it takes two to three times longer than I think it will. That switch statement is much longer than it needs to be, isn't it? Okay, I think what I'll do is we'll only fire if something's not in the way. Uh, let's make this 
Actually, let's make this just X. X, and we'll just make this Y. And we'll initialize it to the player's position. Right. All right, so it's a plus one and minus one and minus one and minus plus one. There we go. So then we can re just reduce this to x, y. So if there's no obstacle in the way, we're going to make a new weapon there. So. Oh, hold on. I go back, go back, 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 back. I do want the dx and dy to not include the current position. That's important. I do want it to be dx, dy. I'll make this one. like this, plus dx plus dy, there, there. Now, to make a weapon, we already made one before, right? We had this one that sort of, sort of flew off to the right when we started, so here it is. So we'll just do it right here. Create a new entity. Make it a weapon with the position and tile, and we'll initialize it there. And the position is, okay, I have to use, I have to be careful here. Let's make this one player position. And this one's weapon position. Okay, weapon position is player position plus one square in the correct direction. And then we also want to uh, store the dx and dy here. There we go. Let's try it out. Um, okay. It's running, so we stop it. Okay, now we can build. I am not including it in the make fi make build system. Correct, I am not doing that. Let's do it. Try again. All right, run and connect. Here we go. You got. You guys asked for it. No, fire. Not firing. It's supposed to fire. Did I not put it in the um? Not working. He's not firing his axes. What did I do wrong? This is a consistent thing. I keep getting everything wrong. The system is in there. Oh, it's looking at move and not fire. <laughs> fire. Okay, now you're now now ghosts, your days are numbered. Oh. There we go. Look at that. Die. Die. Okay, one one problem I'm having is that um it's not registering that I'm firing until the tick happens. The other problem is that the ghosts aren't dying fast enough. They're not dying at all. Come on. That should kill you. It's not killing you. Can I at least kill the generator? See, if I hold down, if I, it, it's sometimes it's uh, making three axes instead of one because of the way I'm holding it down. I guess what I want to happen really is the axe should only, um, it, it should spin much more quickly and uh, move at a rate different than which it's spinning. Because right now it looks, it's, it's a, 
it's the same X, but one frame delayed each time. Okay, why is my why are my ghosts not dying? That's what I want to know. So the weapon system should be should be killing them. Oh wait a minute, it's not. It's just taking health away. Shoot, I forgot about that. If health is less than zero, then uh, destroy. Well, it's just not. It's not just weapons destroyed. It's entities destroyed. Then it is the Collider's Entity ID. There. Okay. I'll get this someday. Oh, thanks for the follow, West Cut. Alright, let's see this. Die. You're not dying! <laughs> Um, yes. Oh, great. Less than or equal to? I only gave the goat goes uh, one hit point. Okay, it's when they reach zero health, they need to be destroyed. Oh, and I'm also looking at the wrong thing. It should be the collide. It should be the collider's entity ID. Okay, that would be another reason why it wouldn't work. Let's try one more time. Die. Oh, look at that. He he got killed. All right, let's kill this generator. I don't want that ghost to kill me. Die. There we go. I should be able to kill the generator after I hit it ten times. Yep, it's destroyed. <laughs> so all I need is sound effects and uh, visual effects particles. And um, I want to fix this trigger thing. So I wanted to basically, um, every time I hit it, see now if, if I hit it and I release the key too quickly, it doesn't actually fire. I kind of want it to um, sticky. I want it, the trigger to be sticky. And do I want to? What do I want to do about this uh, throwing us uh, throwing one like that? Actually, you know, one way I could do it is I could have Pixie simulate it. If Pixie knows that a weapon is flying in a certain direction, it could interpolate between um, tiles. That might be interesting to see. Let's check this in, though, at first. So it's, ex it's at least functional. Although the controls are a little difficult. So we added a firing system. Add player firing system. And to fix the lethal lethality, is that a word? Of weapons? They weren't lethal before. Now they are. <laughs> I can also run into the weapon myself. And I could give the uh, monsters weapons if I wanted. So it, it should work the same way. It'll, just, it'll destroy the player if the player runs out of uh, health and runs into a weapon. I do want it to repeat all the time. So in the real Gauntlet game, if you hold down the fire key, your character continues to throw axes, right? Uh, but what I... But um, it's the sampling problem right now that I'm seeing, where um, if I just hold it down, um, it's only drawing every time it rotates, so it looks like it's not moving. I can get rid of that problem by having uh, Pixie.js um, interpolate the position of the axe, and it'll, it'll look, look sl like it's, slow, it's, it's smoothly moving, and then every time it gets to another tile, rotate again. Then that'll give a little bit of a motion effect. Maybe we'll do that next. So to do that, I need to have uh, 
a tick rate. What's the tick rate now? Is it every turn it's um, moving across? Hold on, let me let me see. What is the rate of these messages right now? A little longer than 100 milliseconds, actually. Which one are we on? Let's reload. New game. Here they are. Okay, I'm going to do one thing in that uh, I'm going to change the build so that it's optimized. So that's this button down here. We do, uh, I guess we can do release with debug info and then rebuild. And uh, I want to make sure that the latency is the, uh, that it really is close to 100 milliseconds like it should be. By the way, can I demonstrate ECS for Westcut? Oh, sure. Westcut still here? That was a while ago, right? Oh, I see. You said you said yes, please, and okay. Let's demonstrate. So, the uh, the way of doing entity component system is uh, there is a for, I guess the top level object, so to speak, is this components, and it has methods like uh, creating a new entity, and destroying an entity. So, an entity, all it really is, is an integer, and we um, basically make a new one but just by um, incrementing a counter and returning what the counter was. So it starts out as, as one. So the first entity will just be the number one, second entity will be two, and so on. After you create an entity, you have to attach data to it. So what you would decide to attach data, what data you decide to, to attach determines what the thing is. So for example, um, the each wall has a tile, which means it's it's drawn here, and it has so a tile and a position allows it to be drawn on the screen, and um, it has a collider. Basically, you can run into it. A floor would be the same, but without the collider, just a tile and a position. So here are the different components you can attach: collider, uh, like I mentioned, there's tile, so it's what which um gra which which uh, picture to draw, and uh, whether to draw it on the bottom or the top. And then uh, position is just x and y, right? So if you attach a tile and a position, you get something like the flo each floor tile. If you also attach a collider, it doesn't have any data right now, but it's just used as a as a as a label to say that it, you can run into it. So a wall is a like I said, tile, position, and collider. Now each of these monsters is a tile, a position, a collider, and a monster. No data there either. A player is a tile, position, collider, and an input. So the input basically is what keys I'm pressing. You can see at the bottom there, I can either move or I can fire. Right? And um, by virtue of having an input component, it is the player. So the actual game logic is in off to the side of the components, there is another group called the systems. So for example, there's the player movement system. What the systems do is they loop through all of the entities that have certain components. So for example, the player movement system is going to loop through all components of type input, which will basically just be the player, right? And for every input, com every entity that has an input component, it finds the corresponding position, and then based off of what key you're pressing, it moves it in that direction, right? Which updates the position. Um, other things like the AI system, it's it's going to loop through all components of type monster. And for every monster, it determines like which direction to try to move. And if it hits the player, it does damage. Uh, the, since it's the monster is also a ghost in the Gauntlet game, that the ghost dies when it hits you. So it also reduces its own hit points to zero and gets killed. And yeah. So the, the combination of systems, which is the code, and the components, which is the data, basically is your game. Uh, you uh, basically just run every system, every game tick. The systems themselves can determine like how fast they they move. So like I just I decided 
the player will only move every other game tick. And I wanted to slow the monsters down even further, so they only move every fifth game tick. But weapons move every tick. So a weapon will fly across the screen at the maximum rate of the game. So this test axe here, right? The ac these axes um, fly at the uh, tick rate. I'm having too much fun playing my own game. So another thing we could do, for example, we have that health component. We could, um, in the uh, render system, we could include like rendering what the health is of every of every um, entity, which we, which we could use to draw health bars. So like, for example, if I wanted to show like a health bar above the um, generator to show how damaged it is, I could just be passing both the health and the maximum health of the um, generator, and then you would see it dwindle down as I hit it. So hopefully that explains enough. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, yeah, so I wanted to, I, I'm gonna make sure that that's all checked in, right? I guess we wanted to do the, in, the position interpolation for the weapons next. So, oh, right, I had built it, um, and I wanted to verify that it's running at the correct tick rate now. So we can see that here. It looks roughly correct. It's a little bit more than 100 milliseconds. You can see the times between them. I think it's because I am uh, between each 100 milliseconds, we run all the systems. So it actually gives me a good estimate of how long it is to run each system, or all, to run all the systems, right? So for example, this should have this should have ticked again at 9.25, but it ticked at 9.33, so it means it took about 7 milliseconds to run everything. Not bad. Cool. So, yeah, that's a sort of what I expected when we compile this with optimization. And So, if that's the rate at which the game is ticking, then between game ticks we can simulate the movement of weapons if we know, if we know uh, where we are. Well, thanks, Playing With Scissors, but this was really intended to be a prototype, so I wanted to get this done in four hours. It took long... Whoa. It didn't kill the ghost. Uh-oh. How did that fly through the ghost without killing it? That was weird. You see that? Now it's killing them. I had one not die. Okay, they're, they're moving a little bit too... I, I need to slow these guys down. Because I want to be able to get around them. Let's slow them down. I need cheats. Slow the the AI down. Let's cut them. Cut their speed in half there. And try again. Okay, there we go. Much better. Okay. Get around these guys. I think it's actually, it is going, it is hitting them, and it's just that if there are two ghosts side by side, because of the interpolation, it doesn't look like, um, I mean, the lack of interpolation, it doesn't look like I destroyed the one I thought I destroyed. Yeah, and the lack of making the fire sticky is annoying me. I think the generator is too quick, too. Uh, maybe, maybe not. This does have some of the mechanics of the gauntlet game, like the real gauntlet game. If they're approaching at a diagonal right that, like that, it forces you to move to avoid getting hit. And now I'm having too much fun playing my own game. There we go, I won. <laughs> uh, let's see, what the order, what is the order? It is weapons move first, and they if they strike, they kill them. Then uh, we fire new weapons, we move player, and then move the AI, and then um, generate new monsters. So yeah, it could have been that, so that's why I re-inspected that. Okay, let, let's do the interpolation, because this will be more fun. To do the interpolation, I have to uh, keep track of time, and I had 
I still have that commented out. I had some... No, this is the wrong file. I had, like, code to do ticking. Okay, maybe it's not here. I must have deleted it. Let me uh, peek at... Whoa. Didn't expect that to move. Okay, let's open... Previous code where I was playing with this. Source. Index. Okay, there was, like, a way you can make things tick. Here it is. So you add a ticker, is what you do, in setup. So add a ticker, and then tick delta. And it's at 60 hertz, right? I think. Why did I have this delta divided by 60? I think it's because it is in ticks and not in seconds. I think that's why. It's going to look a little jerky. It won't look perfect, but let's see how let's see how good I can make it. Blinging projectiles, yes. It never fails. How's it going, Pyroshade? Shout out to Pyroshade, by the way. He's working on, what is it, a wizard battle card game in Unity. And he likes to fling projectiles in his game all the time. Lots of spells. Let's see. So I need to keep track of what is in motion. So maybe what we'll do is we'll, give, we'll have the rendering system give it a hint. Um, that's the ren rendering system is where? Render. Okay. So let's... Uh, we'll give it a hint that it is in motion if it has a weapon type. Really, I should have another component called, um... Uh, like, velocity or something. But right now it's weapon. Hey, it's a prototype. I can cheat, right? So let's form this one outside of here. So auto sprite equals that. And then we'll add the sprite. I know I misspelled it. Fixed. We'll say if it has a weapon component. Then I will add a we'll add to that sprite. Uh, let's just keep it easy. Uh, DX and DY. All right. So in the front end, if we I think what we'll do is when we if we see that we'll. Well, it's going to be stored, right? Let's just store it. Uh, where do I want to store it? Can I just attach it to Sprite? I can just attach any data I want, right? So I can say DX. Um, let's Let's actually put this into... Something like um, motion or something. Kind of like that. Then we'll say if it has motion. If sprite on motion. Actually, I want, I, why don't I just attach it directly? Either has it or if it it either has it or it doesn't, right? So then we can loop through, and for all the ones that have motion, we can uh, do interpolation of. Uh, so in the tick, we can interpolate their positions. So hold on, let me see if I can do this right. 
I think I want to do it this way, right? Only not object keys, I want to do object values. And this is in tick. Object values, this sprites for each sprite. If sprite dot motion, then sprite dot x plus equals sprite dot motion dot dx times. Here's the tricky part. So uh, it's going to be. Let's reset time every time we um, get told to render, right? So. I know I don't have a part of the React state. Sort of on purpose, though. This is sort of outside of the React DOM. Uh, we would get... Um, let's just set it to zero. And I should also initialize it to zero here, right? Times this dot time. Let's call it something other than time. Actually, I had it up there. Um, delta time? And then just we reset it to zero. And we just project from there, right? So it's that that much. So this times that. And that'll move it one pixel. So the entire tile would be uh, 16 times 3. So really, let's um, let's pre-compute this. So let um, what do I want to name it? Delta motion, I guess. And that's not that it's plus equals, right? It's equal, and I need to have a base, so let's, I need to store this separately. Let's just have it in the motion thing. Yeah, I like that. Plus dy, so I mean, it means back up here when I did the motion thing, I have to do it this way. x is dot, um, this is dx. So store dx and dy from the motion, but x is going to have the original uh, coordinates. Sprite x. Can this be used to cheat? No, this is just displaying only. This is just a trick. I think this will work. It could be horribly wrong. Let's see. Is the game running? Yeah, the game is running, so connect. It didn't really work, did it? I'm supposed to see the axe like shift through the air. Uh, oh, I might not have rebuilt the game now. I might have forgotten to do that. Let's see. Yeah, I forgot to rebuild it. Okay, now the motion. I guess we can verify one thing at a time, unless if if this doesn't work right away. Yeah, it's not working, but I can verify that we're see we're getting motion data. So here, amongst the sprites, there should be the weapon. Hard for you guys to see that. Okay, there's the weapon. Okay, it has a motion structure. Uh, let's do a console log so I can see what it's doing. Okay. Yes. So, we'll say console.log moved sprite sprite. This is going to be real spammy, though. I'm sure. 
Yep. Interesting that it. Oh, that's the ads. Okay, there are no ad. There are ads, but no moves. So there is a problem. I didn't see it actually move the uh, sprite. So maybe this isn't. It's not hitting this. This is going to get real spammy, considering moving sprite. Just see what it does. It got real spammy. That's for sure. Oh, and it's still running. <laughs> Let's remove it out. Well, actually, I can, I can look at one of them before my console gets overwhelmed. I wonder if it's just not letting me attach things to it. That's the problem. Is this some, what, what the actual game will look like? Um, probably not. The, uh, the fact that it's square tiles? Yeah, but um, I, I hope to have better graphics and have more... Um, I hope to, to embellish this a lot more. I'm wondering if the problem is I can't really attach things like motion to sprite. So maybe I should maybe I need to have a parallel structure. Uh or sprites could have two things in it. Actually, let's just rename it. So instead of sprites, it's going to be Yeah, well no, we'll keep it sprites. Actually, I, I kind of want to make it a different thing. I can't think of what else to call it, though. I'm going to get a little redundant, though, then. Because I'm going to want to make it um, two, two levels. The sprite is that. Actually, let's do this. do it this way. Let sprite equals this. Well, I was able to attach a Z. Hold on, maybe, maybe I don't need to do this. Go back. Let me just do this and then do console.log it right away. Sprite in motion. Interesting. I, I would have expected to see that. Oh, wait a minute. This needs to be sprite data. Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha. That's what it was. Oh, I think it's working. Yeah. Okay, I don't need to see that anymore. It's a little jerky, though. And I don't know how, how, how easily you guys will see it. It's definitely flying. It's not flying at the right rate, and it's jerky. It might be because the rate is not correct. Can you kind of see it sliding? But it's, it's sort of jerky, and these ghosts are getting in my way. Come on, ghosts. You're cramping my style. Here, we'll destroy your generator. There we go. You can kind of, okay, you can kind of see it when I'm just sending a stream of them. They, they move a little bit, but they're not moving the entire frame. And this move sprite I don't need to see anymore. So this delta motion isn't enough. Maybe it's this 60 thing. Uh, maybe I should see this. Let's console.log 
the uh, tick delta. Hmm. Doesn't look right, does it? Oh, I should actually be printing out delta time, shouldn't I? Oh, it's a division in seconds, but the tick rate for the server is a tenth of a second, so I need to I need to take that into account. So I need to multiply it. I have to basically need to divide it by the uh, the uh, server's tick rate interval. There we go. Look at that. Can you guys see that? My axes, they fly. Interesting thing, they, they go into the wall. They don't cease to exist until they're in the center of the wall. I like it. So my axes are rotating every, every 90 degrees. So that's it. basically the server is not telling me where the X is X until it gets to each discrete point. And the um, client is interpolating the position in, the, in, in between. So I can do that for anything that's in motion now. It looks super slick. I know I'm only streaming at 20 FPS, so it might not look so good to you guys. But I can see it pretty well. It's, not, it's actually not that jerky at all. I like it. I wish I could see it from your perspective. I guess I could watch my own VOD later to see what that looks like. All right, let's check that in. Uh, actually, does that... We should probably have it cease to do it when we are not um, connected. Eh, whatever, it works. It works, ship it. Uh, status. Oh, I'm in, I'm in the correct directory. Okay. Okay, so this is interpolating motion. Okay. Inter interpolate um, the position of moving sprites. So I could do the thing. Actually, I could do the same thing with the uh, ghosts. If I knew which direction they were going to move in the next turn, I could do it. The problem is, I guess, if um, I'd have to know in advance that they are going to move. Otherwise, they will pop back. Instead of calculating, you can use request animation frame. Hmm, okay. I'll look that up later. Let me look that up later. Did I put this note in the wrong place? No, that was an old note. I thought I had another note for today. Maybe not. Uh, why is this scrolling? There we go. Cool. Okay, so the server end, I slowed down the enemies. And, okay, this one's the important one. We, um... We told the front end that weapons are in motion. So render, inform front end about weapon motion. Am I okay with the way, the speed at which they're going now? Oh, do you see that? I saw that. Weapon passed right through it and didn't kill it. That time it worked. Actually, I think I know what it is. It's possible for the ghost to um, walk into the weapon, and uh, you won't have it... Yeah, it won't... The uh, weapon only damages it if the weapon moves into something else, not if something moves into the weapon. That's a bug. I want to get this trigger thing fixed, too. I wanted, to, I wanted to queue up firing a weapon on the next tick, is what I wanted to do. 
I, I'm not going to check in this the ghost speed increase. I'll speed them back up. I mean, the decrease. We'll speed them back up. Uh, I should remove the tick stuff. Okay, that's good. Okay, actually, I need to take a quick bio break. I'm going to check this in, and I'll be right back, okay? So remove tick console messages. Let me make sure. By the way, all this stuff is up on GitHub, if you, if you guys want to play with it, too. So my GitHub is there, and oh, it looks like I forgot to push this part. There is a two-step process if you wanted to get it. So the... Uh, Main repo is called uh, Iron Glove Workspace. When you check that out, there will be a main XML. And uh, basically, you have to clone all of these repositories from these URLs and put them into these subdirectories. And I have a tool that I use to automate that process. It's called Mugget. You don't have to use that tool, but you do need to clone all these subrepositories and put them in the right places. And uh, then you, you'll basically get all the files I have, and you can build it with VS Code, with CMake, and um, whatever build tools you have, or you can just play the play the front end. The game won't work without the front end and the back end, though, so. Yippers. Um, I'll be right back. Hello. Okay. Actually, I'm starting to think that maybe I won't end this prototype today, but keep it around for um, trying out different things. So, um... Oh, thanks for the follow. Um, like, as I want to add sound effects, I might add it first to this prototype game, and then, um, yeah, if I want to try things out on something on a smaller scale, this is a nice platform. Oh, yeah. Die. Die, ghost. You too. You want some? And kill the generator. All right, so I, I want to make the weapon key sticky, because right now, sometimes the weapon doesn't fire if I, if I release the key um, too quickly, and then it doesn't actually fire. So, this doesn't go through that wall either, does it? Right. Let's do that next. So, that is a change in how the input system works. Uh, fundamentally, oh, thanks for the follow, by the way, day, day rain. Excuse me. So, the way the input system works is a WebSocket message comes in from the front end with a different fire key. And I'm just storing it into the input system. I mean, into the input component. Maybe I want to do... I know, I know what I want to do. We'll have fire, and then we'll have next fire. And we'll always store next fire into... Um, we'll always store it into next fire. Okay. But then what we'll do is when it, um, well, let me think about this. How about we have it clear the current fire, 
So if you press a key and then release it, that stays around, right? Sort of sticky. And then I guess we could have it... Um, yeah, so what I'm thinking is in the player firing... I, uh, hold on, how about we do this? Flip these. So that if you release it too quickly... No, that's not right. Um, shoot, what do I do? Actually, I think what I want to do is have a flag here. Released. And, uh, yes. So then, that's a Boolean. Let's call it fire released. So then in the player firing, they fire, and if it's released, it goes back to zero right away. So if input fire released, then fire uh, input fire is zero. Let's try this. Then it should um, at least fire one for one tick. And it's interesting. Took a bit of time there to stop. Fire cannot be modified because it's accessed through a const. Indeed it is. We have to make it not const. I just noticed I have 10 drop frames and I don't know when I dropped them. Don't you hate it when you drop frames and you don't know when that happened? Okay. Okay, this is good. Now, now it, although that ghost didn't die. I, maybe I should fix that bug next. Die. Now if I just press it momentarily, it always makes at least one axe. I should do the same thing with move. Yeah, let me do the same thing with move. Yeah. And then I'll fix the bug with the uh, ghost um, managing to survive by running into the axe. Um... So that means that the input should also have a move released, right? And the uh, the main game, when you move, it calls move released true. And then in player movement, I do the same kind of thing. So I say if input dot move released, input dot move is zero. And then that can't be a const. Okay. Okay, cool. Oh, only it's um it's releasing every time. I think it's because I need to uh clear that flag. In two actually hold on, let me think about this. Yes, uh, not there, but in here. Input fire released is false, and move release is false here. It's like moves an extra square sometimes.
Yeah, sometimes it's moving two squares when I hit a movement key. Yeah, sometimes it's firing twice now, too. Isn't that cool how you can see it's adding and then removing the sprites? So the sprite number actually is the entity number, so we have 255 entities now. And, uh, well, we don't, they're not, they don't all exist, but they, um, that's how many have been created since the game started. So it's maybe a little too sticky right now. Okay, so let's say you move. That's now false, and there's a movement, and then you release, so then it sets it to true, but it still moves one more. Oh, I see what might happen. If you release it and it hasn't ticked yet, and you started releasing in a previous turn, then um, it'll still move one, one extra one. So, another flag? Yeah. I don't know how complicated I want to make this. But I want to, I want it to feel better. So let's try this. So bool um moved this tick is false. If we get a movement key, it's always true. And I know what it'll do. So we'll say if we didn't, if the move didn't happen, this tick, we'll clear it right away. If we just had to, in the movement, we have to clear it. Right? And let me do the same, I'm just going to hope that that's correct and do the same thing for firing. So, fire this tick. If we didn't fire this tick, then clear fire when we release the button. Okay, let me try that. And, there we go. No longer doing double moves, but I think the the double firing can still happen just because it the fire the tick rate is so high. Yeah, it allows me to fire very rapidly, so it's hard to just fire once. A lot of times it fires more than once. I guess I don't really care. I think even in the real game, um, you end up, you, it's hard to fire just one axe at a time. You'd end up firing a, a few anyway. Alright, so I guess I'm okay with that. Alright, so let's check that in. Got 20 minutes left before I have to go run a carpool, so. I don't, I'm not gonna get the uh, treasure stuff in there, I'm afraid. But that's really just a matter of um, destroying it when you walk into it and you, you have a tr uh, score that you increase. Let's see, this is 
basically debalancing of input. Attack speed, yeah, like an attack cooldown. Right now the cooldown is effectively one tick, but that's a tenth of a second, so it's very likely to uh, end up attacking twice. Actually, no, it shouldn't be. Well, t ten of a second is a pretty short amount of time, right? Um, okay. I could probably remove that um, fake X that I added, right? Oh, no, I wanted to fix the bug where they're able to um, avoid getting hit, right? So for that, I think I want to separate the collision system out from the weapon system. Or I can, uh, yeah. Hold on, let me think about this. The damage system. I can detect a collision. Let me, okay, so where is it in the weapon system now? We do that, right? But we also want to do that if the flip side, if any collider runs into a weapon. Actually, you know what we could do is we if it's we could just check to see if it started colliding, right? And I can just move this out. So well, let's not do two things at once. We will uh, do this part both before and after. So. We will see if there's something already colliding with the weapon, basically. If there's something already colliding with the weapon, that means uh, the last turn a ghost actually moved into it. Right? So if... Okay, that needs to be auto, because we're going to reuse it down here. Actually, there is an else, isn't there? Else would do this. So we could collide with something immediately. Or we could collide with what we're about to move into. And if nothing, neither of those happens, we just move. Quick and dirty. I just don't want those ghosts to live when they should die. <laughs> they should die. They already died once, they're going to die again when they hit my axe. Okay, that wasn't a very good test because there are two axes. Again, I just need one axe. There we go. They do seem to momentarily jump once, don't they? Okay. I think we're good now. None of them are escaping my axe. Okay, yeah, there's... They do seem to jump across sometimes, but then they still die. No rest for the wicked. I can't stop playing this game now. Actually, it looked like those two axes both hit the same entity, didn't it? Oops. Too many ghosts. Yeah, it is. Is it traveling one more than it needs to be? It should be dis. It should be destroyed, though. It shouldn't actually travel. <laughs> oh, but the interpolation, right? Because it's not evaluated until the next turn. So for a turn, the uh, ghost and the weapon will be on the same square right now. So it'll look like the we the weapon's traveling further. Yeah, I I just saw it there.
So yeah, a lot of this is refinement at this point, right? So mechanically it's working, it's just the interpolation, the motion interpolation makes it look like it, the, it continues to travel for a, a frame, even though the axe has actually been destroyed. Or it should have been destroyed. It doesn't know it was destroyed until the next frame. Come on, generate. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, another thing I noticed is um, you can't see the bottom wall. Um, it's probably because it's not a multiple of 16 in height, right? Should I just fix that now? So it's, um, is it 14 by 12? Type plus 1. 15 times 13. So I can do this. Maths, right? Uh, it's in the, it's in the pixie stage that we set up. Can't, can't do maths. So it's 16 times 3 times, uh, 15. Right? Is it 15? Is that, is that how big that I made the stage? 15, 15 by 13, so 700, is that right? 5, no, it's 16 across, right? 0 to, f no, 0 to 14 inclusive is 1, it's 15. 720 by uh, 13 times 16 times 3, 624. Must be Pixel perfect. Look at that. Pixel perfect. Why don't you use the VS Code extension and lets you do math? Because I don't know. I'm not comfortable. I, I know of it. I just don't happen to know the key combination. Yeah, I'm just lame. All right. Uh, let me check that in. Okay, so uh, don't let monsters survive by moving into weapons. Actually, you know, another way to do it would just be to make a weapon, a collider. Actually, then the weapons would be destroying each other. I don't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, have weapons check for collisions before moving. I don't need to sign it off. Hit that button by mistake. Alt E. If it's if it's if that's what it is, I can do it. I'll just hold on just a sec. Make any changes here? I did. Right, so align the stage the actual game bounds. Okay, let me try this. So you're saying I can do um, like 15 times 16 times 3 and then do Alt E? No, it's not Alt D. E. So you're saying it's probably something in here, right? Like compute or calculate or evaluate or something? Emmet evaluate math expression. It looks like I don't have have it bound to anything. I guess E does make sense. Uh, let's go ahead and do that binding. Key binding. How does this work? Key map. No, I don't want to. I don't want an extension. Why is it going to that? I just want to change the binding. Keyboard shortcuts. Find it all T. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. KS. Th is that how you get here? All right, so I want to add one. Um, yeah, let's just open the JSON. We already had th that set. I don't remember setting that, but... Yeah, I gotta leave in 10 minutes. Key is alt 
E command is editor Emmet okay, how do I know how do I know what the name of the command is? Maybe I don't want to do it this way. <laughs> Let's go back to the uh, non yeah, here we go. Let's look for it. Um Evaluate math expression, right? There we go. Plus E. Enter. Done. <laughs> All right. So this E. There we go. That works. Now I have to keep that. I have to memorize that now. And I have to put it in my Linux and Mac setups as well. All right. I have 10 minutes left before, actually I only have eight minutes now. Um, I only have a few minutes left. So anything else I wanna do that I can fit into here? What did I plan to do that I haven't gotten to yet? Actually, I forgot to do, um, oh, thanks for the follow. Acronymisk. I forgot to say add um, death. <laughs> death. So there needs to be a way for us to die. And actually, I guess it's calling a, a game. Well, we just combine it into game, game over system, right? We either get to the exit. I could build that into the, if you get to the exit, it's game over, you win. If you um, die, it's game over, you lost. So we can have a game over system that looks to see, have you made it to the exit? Is your health zero or lower, right? So maybe I can, that can be on the list to do and uh, pickups. And actually, I guess I can I can work on this tomorrow again. Continue to refine it a bit. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Did I answer you about the usability of the code? Are you just making a game, or can this be used to make others? Uh, sort of. I guess the usability. This is just a prototype, but I do have that up on GitHub. I don't know if you saw me put the link up there. But if you go to my GitHub and look for Iron Glove Workspace and Iron Glove Backend and Iron Dash Glove, and then um, all the dependencies are um, listed in a, in this main.xml at the top level of the workspace. So um, you can either clone those individually or use my Mugget tool. So it I did intend it to be uh, at least a prototype example. So you could look at it to see like what was my attempt to make a component system. I mean, it is a functional ECS system. It's maybe not the most performant or correct, uh, but I, yeah, I don't know. You you can judge for me. I don't want to judge my own work. I, don't, I have no idea if this is a good ECS or a bad one. You're building a C++ engine right now. That's why you asked. Well, I mean, again, I have no idea if mine is good or not. I'll let you be the judge of it. So. It's there on my GitHub if you want to take a look. I, I need someone who's already an expert at making this kind of thing to give me a evaluation of, how, of what I got right, what I got wrong, what could be improved. I'm pretty sure that some of the ways that I am uh, searching for entities, for example, is very inefficient. It is basically just looping through and, and matching the entity IDs. The, the problem is that if I used a searchable data structure, it will have different cache performance, so it'll be better in one way, worse in another. And I really don't know, like, what is the performance now? I'd have to measure it. And then what is the performance I need? For this simple example, it doesn't matter, right? But as the game scales, it's like, I'll have to f run into these problems, right? People use maps. See, but if you use a map, it's all allocated d by default off of the heap, so your memory gets fragmented. So then do you use custom allocators to keep your memory all allocated as one chunk to help cache performance or, or what, right? So there's a lot of trade-off between um, optimization and uh, other things and different kinds of optimization or performance, I mean. This, like you can tell, one mistake I made was I didn't use uh, either templating or macros like I could have. This could all be reduced, right? 
Uh, so yeah, so there's, there's some improvement here. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, see, you're playing with scissors. I'm about to head out anyway, because I have to go do a carpool. Map from entity ID to, to int. For me, it would be mapping entity ID to different components, I suppose. Because you can still iterate through a map in linear time, right? It's just the searching for me is very slow. That could be improved by using a map. Yeah. And for me, an, ent an entity ID isn't it, so kind of get that one for free. So I think I will wrap things up, and I may or may not continue this tomorrow. Either I'm going to continue this tomorrow and do pickups, the exit component, and the game over stuff. Oh, I need to also show the uh, health, this one. So I'm edit I'm ending with these things unfinished. So that that could be enough to do tomorrow, or I'll maybe go back to um, my normal work. You're off as well. Okay. Have a good day, Epic Unknown. So yeah, but the uh, by sometime tonight I'll have figured out what I want to do, and I'll put it as a plan for tomorrow. And so you can either either come back to my notes, or uh, I'll see. You, uh, I'll be I'll be putting a, a plan in uh, my discord like the morning of and yeah i usually stream from 10 a.m to 2 so i'll be s streaming again tomorrow morning probably working on polishing up this prototype adding in pickups displaying health score and potions and having a way to either win or lose the game and i guess would he i guess other things i could do sound effects particle effects i don't know i'll have to think about it so, you know, another thing I was thinking of, this would be a cool um, be right back screen if I um, added more stuff to it. <laughs> yeah, so some particle effects. Whenever a um, something is hit, we could um, have a little uh, explosion, right? Or whenever the um, player is, or uh, ghost runs into the player, we could have something happen. So we got various things we could do. So while I leave that running, I'm going to peek off stream and see uh, who we can go raid. Hope you enjoyed watching today. Oh, Leland is going. I haven't raided Leland in a while. Normally he is streaming in the evenings. He's going though, so we'll, we'll go raid Leland. Le I like Leland because he is making a game completely in Lua using the Love 2D engine. So please say hi to him for me, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, I'm going to set this thing up. It's typing in all the things here. Is it going? Okay, I think it's going. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.